the the cover photo announcement. How far in? What do you mean? The contest thing that we got running. Um. So I gotta go on and find that and figure out who. I think it's that Jordan Yancey guy. You blew up five hundred people. No, not the giveaway. This thing. Oh, oh, oh! Let's do that right after the shoutouts. Yeah. So okay. I gotta go through here. And find. I'll go through this while you guys are doing your shout out. So. You live right now? Okay. You got people watching? Watching, watching? Well, it doesn't matter if you watch it. When it's done, you can rewind it. <laughs> Start over. Oh, shit. Oh, 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 let's do that yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> really? We're working on it, dude. We had to live through that again. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. It's a little delayed. Yeah, it was last time too. It was probably. Oh no, it, it, it always was, is. No, it I was always watching is. Somebody's the, listening. The Lake County guys, and I would chime in in like you'd fifty watch, seconds. Watch, yeah, you'd watch, you'd yeah. Watch, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, hey, there's my comment. Yeah, that's the, it from going up to the satellite and back down, and yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's some lag time. <laughs> technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just oh, mute it. Oh, Just turn oh, it down no. on the side. All right. And we're live right now, so okay. I gotta say, guys, you know, uh, the animosity that builds right before one of these shows um, is what makes us, you know, at 8.03 or 8.07 or, uh, so sorry that we're always constantly late. Um. <laughs> well, late right on time. No, you know what? Um, punctuality is everything to me, especially in the line of work I do. And, and Except I mean, for this. Yeah, except for this. I mean, I was, sorry, I was popping. We, we were here. Where yeah. were you? <laughs> yeah, where were you, dude? <laughs> Okay, you ready to go, Ricky? Randy? Yep. Okay, uh, welcome everybody to episode eight. And why is eight so great? Because it rhymes with great. And that's what kind of experience I want you to have when you come to 707 Streetcars or watch the show or contact with a, uh, one of us uh, for any kind of information. Um, so uh, it's episode eight and it's brought to you by uh, 707 Streetcars here in Northern California in Sonoma County. And uh, oh, I got one chicken scratch that I wrote. Okay, so first of all, here's what we're gonna do tonight. We're gonna uh, we're gonna give some shout outs, and then we're going to announce the banner contest winner. Um, and how long is he? Have we decided he's gonna be live for on our page? A week or so. Okay, so a week or two, you know. A piece of paper. Um. You know what? I actually have more than one. Oh, you need something to write on now, too, huh? No, 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 no. I'm stingy, good. aren't I? Okay, so I would like to get through some shout-outs. Um, guys, we've had just a phenomenal week uh, this week, um, and a lot of stuff has gone on. Um, the first thing I want to say is I hope that everybody out there, uh, you know, every man, woman, and child that lives on this soil um, is, is safe or in the world, you know, for that matter, I just, I, I thank God, you know, every day on my way to work, dear God, you know, please keep my children safe, get dear me through this day. Um, and uh, for the people that, <laughs> for the people that are affected by the COVID-19 thing, my heart goes out to you. If there's anybody out there who's been laid off, that's a friend of mine that, you know, I can help in any way, you know, don't, I, you know, don't go hungry. I got food. Uh, don't be able or don't have to wipe your bottom with a, a leaf. That you got from your yard. I got toilet paper. You know, if, if, if I have a friend and they're in dire need, just all you got to do is contact me, man. And what, what's mine is yours. So um, as far as that, I want to I want to take my hat off and and, 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 and thank, uh, you know, all the the men and women in law enforcement and fire and on the front lines, like the doctors and the nurses that are taking care of everybody. Um, I think that um, some of the rotten stuff that's gone on in this country and politics in the last while has uh, is is actually is being overridden by uh, once again the American unity. You know, we you know nine eleven whatever we're Americans and when when the when the you know what hits the fan, uh, we come together because that's what we do. Um, so my heart goes out to everybody, and I hope that everybody uh, that's watching that may watch this on another page or catch it at a later time. I hope you guys are 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 are, are safe and and sound. So. Um, and every now and then as she's watching the camera, she'll look up at me. And the only thing, because I'm, I'm watching the phone, but when I see her eyes in my peripheral vision, the only thing I can think of that she's thinking is, what are you talking about, bro? Or <laughs> is he going <laughs> to shut up? <laughs> so I want to give uh, 
I want to give some shouts out. Uh, the first being to Steve Nigri of RCRI. We got to get this into Steve. I'll get this up in a better place. I don't like that one of my main sponsors is down here. Can we, you're not using the back of that seat, right? You can, That's okay. Fine. Well, you're going to, can you sit any better? It's probably all, okay. Anyway, don't RCRI, um, the name uh, in, in, in the areas that I'm affiliated with, whether it be right here in Sonoma County or other places, um, they're starting to catch on to this. Uh, we've helped sell a lot of chassis for them. And um, it's really, really good stuff. We'll get into that. That's Build an associated chassis. Associated stuff's great, too, if that's what you run. <laughs> oh um, you know, uh, any SCT that you might have laying around, if that's what you can afford to do to get into the sport, man, you got it. That's the first step is getting into I've seen into some it, ones so. that I haven't seen people use before starting to come up. with uh, The HPI, I think it was uh, Firestorm, I think, or something like that. Okay. The, I haven't touched it. HPI in years and years oh. and years, but <laughs> once upon a time... Um, I think I bought in my area here in Sonoma County. I bought the first ever when the when the when the all wheel drive sedans first came RS4. out. RS four. The RS4. first RS four McLaren. I was the first one. I I started immediately bringing it to races, and people were like, "I don't know, can you run with you guys? Because we don't really have a class for that." I was running. I was running solid axle cars like the ten L up there. Um, which is going to be my next restoration. Uh, anyway, I don't want to get sidetracked. I, I do that because I love all aspects. Um, I love. Uh, uh, after the shout out for the COVID and stuff, I really want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I'm sure that they'll agree um, to all our supporters, all the people that have uh, reached out to us, all the people that have needed help, all the people that have helped us. Um, this is just absolutely blowing up in our faces in a good way. So it's not like an explosion. You get hurt. It's like a birthday cake that has a pink, pretty explosion of $50 bills. You're like, awesome. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> I won't go there. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> Steve Steve Nigri is is doing the best he can. If you've ordered a chassis, uh, he's got stuff starting to. I, I don't know. Give me a little insight. Have you? I can't remember. Uh, the last time I think I talked to him was three or four days ago, and he was uh, packaging stuff up. Um, and, and, and trying to get everybody their orders. Um, we have stuff that's on order that we're actually, you know, we've talked to Steve and we're like, Steve, you know, we want our stuff, but hold on to it. Get you know, all these guys that are following us and buying it because of us. Let's get them their stuff first. I mean, we have chassis. Let's get somebody else that doesn't have one into one before I get, you know, one for a car I want to build, you know. Um, I want to say a big shout out to uh, Troy Schroeder at Phantom. Uh, the, all our cars are all outfitted with them. Even even Randy. Randy's outfitted with a Phantom motor. We use Phantom battery packs. It's really fast stuff. So, um, you know, there's other companies out there. And if you choose to go with one of those, that's okay too. Um, but the for the most part, I mean, I... And we were just talking about that before the show. Maybe that's one of the reasons why we were late is sponsors are good. And most people, when they get in with sponsors, they think, you know, discount stuff or free stuff. And we don't do it for that. I don't want to sponsor from a company that I don't believe in. I don't run their, I don't run their stuff. And I don't believe on a race day, it's what I can rely on to, to, to make a W and bring a win home. Okay. So, you know, I, I'm so grateful for, to people like uh, Steve Nigri of, of RCRI and, and Troy Schroeder um, and, and a couple others that I'll mention uh, like Phantom. Um, that are really backing us and I'm it, it's awesome. It'd be like, you know, I'm a Ford Mustang guy. I used to build real road race Mustangs for a living. It's what I did for 18 years. I built race chassis and um, you know, if I was doing that and this, the, the race car I built, you know, Ford Motor Company caught wind and, and said, hey, we want to help you out here doing what you're doing. I mean, that would just be huge to me. So in the RC cars, that's huge to me is have the people that I really love their stuff uh, back us and, and, and uh, Troy Schroeder at Phantom is one of them. So if you don't have Phantom stuff, get it. Get it. Or get, get it. Beat by it. Get it or get beat by it. Or, or let's just say get it or possibly get beat by it. You know, let's <laughs> let, let's keep that just you know professional. <laughs> um, Gabe Abramson. Um, we know local you're watching guy. Gabe. We know you're watching Gabe. If you if you are watching Gabe, we love you. Um, he is. Um, and. Uh, yeah, Gabe's one of our local guys. He's our race master. Um, he's just he's been a uh, just a pillar in Sonoma County of, of RC uh, for years and years and years. And I, I'm really grateful to have him as a friend. So, have a good evening, Gabe. I hope you enjoy the show. Um, our whole Sonoma County crew, all the guys that are backing us, all the guys that uh, that we race with, uh, that show up to our races. I want to give a shout out to them. Uh, I want to get a, a big shout out to our local hobby shop that is trying to do curbside delivery and stuff. Jake's Performance Hobbies in Runner Park. If you notice, I made something a little bit more professional for Jacob there. 
Um, for people that have audio and no video, that's 707-586-3375. <laughs> he's in Rona Park, California, and he ships, and he they're very knowledgeable with the drag race stuff. Um, and uh, and he keeps a lot of products in stock. Um, so, or he can get them really quick. Or he can get them really quick. Um, and, and, and because we're so grateful to have such a good hobby shop uh, in our area, I, I wanted to, to do this for Jake because he is helping people and stay open. Um, it's the little shops, man. You guys, you know, I get it. Sometimes something else might arise, but if you can, shop local. Um, you know, we've uh, there's been talk about some companies that have been around for a long time. We're not going to talk about it because we don't know about it. You know, specifically, we're not attached to it. But some of these small companies that have been around for 35 years, they might not make it through this COVID thing. You know, so now's the time to get out there and support your local hobby shop, okay? So what's up, Jake? If you're watching or when you see this, well, I was going to say, I see you, but <laughs> I can't. So somebody pull up a picture You'll of Jake. You'll see me. <laughs> Okay, and like I said, we got some shout outs here because some stuff uh, has happened. Um, Paul Peterson. Paul Peterson is the owner, if you could zoom in here really close, of Shark RC Bodies. They are a, a body company that's been around for a long time. And they're, they were, I think, that I, as far as I know, I don't think I've had God, all, the, all the conversations I've had with the guy in the last week or two. I don't think I've ever asked him anything else, but I don't think they make anything other than dirt oval bodies until really, really soon. I don't know if it's going to be two days or two weeks, but, uh, or, or what's going on. A lot of that stuff, I don't know if you guys know, but like pro protoform and uh, proline or somebody, I saw a post that they're, they, they've taken all their Lexan and instead of building bodies, oh, they're building they're face, building face yeah. shields for nurses. So I can wait on my bodies. These bodies, you know, if, if I got a clear one, I'll cut the hood off and you can wear the hood. You know what I'm saying? You're like, Oh, cool. <laughs> nice. Kathy Mustang. You know, I might like that. <laughs> So anyway, uh, Paul Peterson is the owner at Shark RC. Watch out for our post because we're going to be posting. They're going to, and, and he asked me, so, so, you know, Mustang, you're thinking Mustang, Dan? And I said, no. I said, you know what? I'm Mustang guy. Anybody knows who, who knows me knows that, that I only run Ford stuff. I'm a Ford guy. You know, that's just what I like. But I don't want it to, cre you know, funnel it down to just that. So I said, no. I said, if we're going to do this, we have to hit the minimum of the big three. So what we're going to have, what we're working on. I don't want to say this for sure because this is something that is, you know, you're at the register, you know, getting ready to ring out. It's it's that it's that kind of a done deal that it's going to happen. But it hasn't yet. I don't own the company, so I want to tread lightly. But if Paul, I told Paul that I said we need the Ford Mustang. I said we need the Dodge Challenger. We need the Cadillac C V S T L M N O P and the um the, the Chevy Camaro. Okay. Um so the bodies um the bodies are not gonna be altered in width or anything like that. Um these bodies are gonna be very similar to this in a very square body. The only reason why we ended up not using this, and I told this to Paul, was because for dirt oval you want a rigid body. You want something that's strong like a bull and they're just too heavy. So the new drag bodies are going to be based around the same thickness as the Parmas and the Pro lines, okay? So that, that takes care of the weight thing. Then he's also going to add not only the decals uh, that are very realistic for the body, but he's going to have chin spoilers and, 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 and rear spoilers for the car. And it's going to be a, a package deal that's made just for drag racing. And I think that it's just going to annihilate the competition. It's going to annihilate sales. Um, and, and it's going to give some guys like me that want to stick with their fork. Let's face it, you know, Proline and everybody's coming out with stuff, but it's all Chevy stuff. And that's cool. I, I respect that if that's what you guys want to run, but I don't run that stuff, you know? So just like if this thing would only be made just only the Mustang body, that would leave me out because I don't run Ford. There you go. Ooh. So same thing. <laughs> um, Bird is not my thing. So Paul, if you're watching, big shout out guys, get to his website, Shark RC Bodies and, uh, and check them out. Um, they're on Facebook. They're all over. Um, and it, it, it's, it's, I think uh, if you go to, did I post it to just my page or 707 Streetcars? Just 707, I believe. Okay, so on 707 Streetcars, there's a new posting with this Mustang that's set up like a drag right from the factory, how you're going to get it. So check it out. Watch for it. It's going to happen. People are so, already talking about the new boss. Yep. The new boss, baby. The boss is in town. <laughs> hey. hey. Yeah, Tony. I'll take the, court, I'll take the Cadillac. 
CTL you gotta you gotta wait in line for that one, Tony. Yeah. I'm getting a Cadillac. The Cadillac CTL MNOP. There you go. There you go. Hey, and, and while we're going, guys, instead of stopping and doing Q and A, and then it gets all flustered, let's just do the questions as we go. You know, um, Matt Kid. Uh, Matt Kid's one of my buddies. He's a local pro racer. He came by tonight and picked something up, and he's like, "What do you want for?" It? I'm like, "Nah, don't don't worry about it." He's like, "Well, here," and he threw me these I know one up products, and um, this is uh, Axle and and and. Uh, uh, motor bearing oil or bearing oil um, one up makes some really really high quality setup stuff uh, maintenance stuff um, you know if you want to bring this to the next level and you want certain lubes that are made just for the bearings on your car and stuff uh, you want setup tables stuff like that stuff that will really 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 file in that that uh, or uh, uh, dial in that that fine precision in your car uh, go check up go check out one up racing um, I've known them for a couple years um, I've used a couple of their products and I've never, I've never gone, well, this is subpar because it's not, you know what I'm saying? This stuff's really nice. So go check mm -hmm. out one up. Thank you, Matt, if you're watching, uh, for, for the oils. Um, and I said a shout out to our RC community. Uh, again, without you guys, this wouldn't be happening. You know, I mean, we wouldn't continue and work so hard at something that we only got three people coming over to hang out with, you know? So, uh, actually I probably still would because I really like these cars. So... <laughs> But anyway, thanks for all you guys' support and coming on and being positive. Um, our, our Ricky had an idea four days ago to start a, um, a 707 Streetcars page, and it's three days old now. And how many people are we up to? We're almost 400. We're <laughs> almost 400 people in three days, guys. So at 500, we're going to have a bitchin' giveaway. Um, and we'll explain later once we get closer to 500 on one of our other shows or on the website or on the, the Facebook page, 707 Streetcars, um, how that's going to work. But when we hit 500 people, we're going to give away a nice little giveaway. So An old pair of dirty socks. Uh, we also want to do some, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, auctions and stuff going on, uh, you know, where you can buy, you know, there's so many raffles. spots, raffles. Or waffles or whatever you want to do. Waffles. We're gonna do yeah, waffles. <laughs> we're gonna do some of that stuff too, but we're gonna do something that nobody else has done, and that's do some drag car specific, you know, waffles. Uh, whether they're uh, full cars uh, or something we use or a gearbox or or something, um, anything that we do for a raffle will be a hundred percent bought out of our own pocket at full price with absolutely no help from any sponsors. Um, that's the only fair way to do it. Um, and we want to we want to give the small guy who doesn't have a lot of money to get into this a chance to maybe buy some nice equipment or get some nice equipment for next to nothing. You know, you pay ten dollars for for one spot in a waffle and win a car. Yeah, a car. there you go. So do we have or do we not have a winner for the banner contest? So we have before you announce it, you got to get the winning picture up. Well, that's going to be hard. We got a problem here. OK, uh -oh. there's two guys by the name of Jordan. One's Jordan Yancey and one's Jordan Peace. They're both tied at 20. Oh. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to show our camera person the pictures and let her decide. Oh, that's what rude. Do no. No, no, no. We can't do that. Let's not do that. That's a cool idea. I like that. But we can't what base the wrong a whole community's <laughs> vote off of what our, and no offense to you, but no, what our, our, but our it, friend here thinks, you know? We need but to, what if she went on to Facebook and hit liked on the one she liked? Her, vo her vote would count. That's true. So it, it, she's a non-biased person. My okay, so somebody, doesn't know somebody set a photos. timer. Okay, you're gonna keep look on, please, on the on the clock. Let's give this uh, <laughs> what two minutes? Oh, First person to comment. We'll go by eight to eight thirty, because eight twenty three. That gives them seven minutes. Seven minutes. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Seven minutes and counting. No, this will not do. <laughs> <laughs> no soup for you. <laughs> I'm a big Seinfeld fan. I'll say it. You know, whatever. So. um... What we're going to do, guys, is we're going to do like a kind of a three-part chassis setup tonight. I want to go over – this is huge, so everybody that's watching, pay attention. So our very first video back on February 7th on Seven Oaks, or Sonoma County NPRC, our homepage, um, we covered – what I thought was the most important at the time because I saw so many guys across the nation having problem with it was chassis setup. Let's get these guys going straight first. And um, I've told for every 10 that I say, hey, back on February 7th, go watch the video. There's 20 more that, you know, so the good thing is that the sport's grown, okay? The bad news is, is I don't know if it's a lot of people don't want to scroll back that long or, or, or if they're different people. And these people went back and checked, and I just never told those, but I'm seeing more and more and more people 
Um, I, I had a one guy message me and he said, dude, I'm getting really frustrated with this thing, man. I've charged, you know, 15 battery packs. I've got all this money done. This literally happened this week. And he says, I just don't know what to do. Can you please help me get it going straight? And I spent an hour on, uh, on a video call with him. Um, and I think, uh, that the car is doing a lot better now. So, um, it's frustrating and before you get into the power or before you buy the phantom batteries or you before you do this or you have a $150 body paint or this and that, you've got to make the car work. And that's where the scale look to it, I really don't care about. Do I like them looking scale? Yeah, they're bitching, right? But I want the thing to work. So before we do anything to your car, if you're building a new you know, build, um, and you, you know, it's bouncing around in your head. You know, I, I don't know much about setting this thing up or you've already built a car in the, in the, in the, the recent past. Um, and, and it's still not dialed in and still not going, um, um, straight. Well, I'll tell you what the, uh, yeah, I don't like that one. There's no way that one's, huh? Oh, oh, what happened? Oh, oh. That's the, that's the two. No, bro. no, 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 no. It was the other one. Not that one. No, where's the other one you had? They had a purple one on there. I don't know. Whatever. We're so anyway, um, anyway, <laughs> the, uh, I'm seeing a lot of problems with the guys, uh, not being able to go straight. Um, and before you even think of leaning on the car with good equipment and spending your money on it and making the car fast, I got news for you. If it doesn't handle, uh, a straight pass with a VXL system or a 5700 castle, it's not going to when you step it up. So what we're going to try and do tonight is answer some of those chassis questions. We're going to go over a basic setup that works on every car. That's why, again, why we have the associated here uh, to compare what we're talking to, uh, something to compare what we're talking to, too. Um, and then we also have, obviously, our one step past that, which is the RCRI chassis, because we've you know, we've got a lot of guys that have been purchasing this, this chassis, and this chassis is not just a, a, a straight bolt together chassis um, that that you just throw together like a like a brand new thirty dollar LCG slash chassis. This is a chassis that you know takes a little bit of, of thought, and you got to slow down a little bit, and you got to build it. And there's some other parts that you need to go with it. It's not just a hundred percent; it's ninety five percent bolt together. But there's a couple little odds and ends that we want to show the guys that I keep getting questions to the guys that have purchased them. Is what do you do for this? What do you do for that? So we're going to cover that. Uh, one question I had or I, that I got was. RCRI, do we use, why do we use the older chassis? If there's a new chassis out, the Pro, why are we using the older ones? Well, the older one is all that was out when I built the Ghost. And it works so well that he actually discontinued these chassis. And after Rick won Vegas with it and proved to him that it really does work, um, he contacted us about making some more. So he has put those back into production. You can you know, currently order a Black Widow um, and that's, that's this chassis. This, this is one of the brand new ones. It's exactly what it looks like. It's a dual deck G10 fiberglass chassis that just works. I believe a lot of that has to do with the fact that his, his, his top deck is low slung. Um, uh, where did my pencil go? I have it hidden. Um, so yeah, we're going to cover some, um, some chassis basics and, and, and hope to, uh, you know, get you guys going straighter than you are. Um, two minutes. There's okay. still two minutes, but that's um, the count. Right explain now. a little bit more to the people, real quick, what uh, what we're gonna, you know, in your words, what we're gonna be going over. On the what the car? Yeah. The chassis setup. We're gonna go over the steering. You know what tie rods, different standoffs for for the uh, the tie rod ends because the. Uh, bulkhead is spun around and laying flat so you got to do some spacings so okay so here's this back to you so you can do what you were doing um and we got a winner it looks like two minutes okay okay yeah um so we got a winner for the very first and thank you uh, we still got two minutes thank you though okay <laughs> it's like my, my leash you know it's like <laughs> Dog's gonna get out of the yard. Um, anyway, um, so we've been running you know, the, 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 the 707 Streetcars page is three days old. And we put just a first little fun thing to see how many guys would get on it uh, of, of a, a banner contest for those who are you, you are new to the page today and didn't, maybe didn't see it yet. Um, so 
Don't choke. Yeah. Dying. Getting all choked um, up. We've had a banner contest. We have a winner. Um, can you show me which one that is before I announce it? Let me double check the numbers because we told them 830. Okay. <coughs> so 20 and... Arms up. 20. Come on. His phone right still there. says 829. That is the winner. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. So Jordan Peace. He has the banner contest. Good looking car. I really don't care for what's written above it. Uh, I, I think you're going to have to prove that name. So I'm sure Ricky will take you up on that someday. Um, and it'll be fun. Um, but uh, it's a beautiful car. So Jordan Peace, uh, good job, dude. The, 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 the photography looks awesome. Um, the car's got a good stance. It's a great masked paint job. It's a really pretty uh, metallic green. Um, the thing looks mean. It really doesn't. I really like the way that he blacked out the lights. I, you know, I never thought about just doing just black lights. It actually looks kind of sinister. So I do have to question um, the name. He's on there too. <laughs> yeah. So as far as Ghost Hunter Jordan, um, like I said, I'm not denying that, but you're there is a ghost in the league, and I want to see that. That's got to go down. The oh, ghost of the ghost he's hunter. Hunting for a ghost. You know, that's like that's like one car being named He Man and the other one being named Skeletor. Those gotta fight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they have to. <laughs> So, hey, uh, good job, Jordan, on the build. Um, maybe Jordan, in the comments, if he's watching, can yes. give us a um, a slight, uh, just maybe one or two sentence uh, detail of not every little thing that's in the car, but what kind of chassis it is. Um, you Basics. know, Yeah, uh, how maybe how old the car is, something like that. Um, but good job, dude. Uh, you're going to be on our our, uh, our Facebook page, 707 Streetcars uh, background for uh, the next week. Yeah, so good job, man. Really, my hat's off to you. Um, so let's... Uh... He said he'll send you a picture without the ghost hunter. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. He, he, well... <laughs> I don't, I'll, I'll, I'll want that up to Ricky. Ricky made <laughs> yeah. the Facebook post page. That, yeah, post that no, absolutely. That's, that's the picture. One. That's exactly. the picture. That's the way it won. That's what's going up there, Jordan. So if we race, nice of you to say that, but that's well, we're we were just totally kidding. If around. we race so, and you don't beat the ghost, you got to take the name off. We, no, we, oh. we get to name it. We get to, we name, get it. to name it. <laughs> It'll be a cool name, though. I swear to God, you'll love it. Okay, I, I got one. What? Ghost busted. <laughs> no, that's, kidding, no that, that's, that's still kind of on you bro if you think about it <laughs> i think it's a it's a really like, again i'm not a chevy guy but it is a good looking car i don't know if he painted it or someone else painted it but i i all my bodies have lame flake i like a heavy bass boat metallic look and that car just nails that so um good job jordan and uh jordan jordan peace won with 23 likes over jordan yancey with 20 it's already uploaded. There you go. Yeah. It's on It's on the site, baby. So until this time, 8.30 next Friday night, um, we'll start another one. Yeah. Yeah, I'll start, I'll start one on Monday. Oh, then... yeah, I guess we got to be one up on it. Yeah, so we already have the picture. Okay. <laughs> hey, man. I have not been sleeping a lot this week, guys. I've been working my butt off, and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those where I need to go to bed at 9.30, and I can't fall asleep till 11.45, and then at four in the morning, I wake up and just sit there and watch my phone go, you know, <laughs> 445, five o'clock, 515. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's get into this. So let's take this again. Check, watch out for, for Shark RC, guys, because this stuff's coming at you and it's going to be coming at you fast. So um, I can't really chuck that. So uh, let's just chuck this. Thank you. Camera girl is always helping out. Oh, hi, Liz. Jamie Garlip. Oh, no. We've had a couple other people have to stand in for you since we've started this. I mean, once or two, I think two times. Um, and nobody nobody does as good a job as Jamie. Jamie does awesome. She's not only working the phone perfectly, but she's, you know, got her hand underneath the phone going, I'll put it behind me on the counter. You know, I'm like, <laughs> uh, nobody else is doing that, so here you go, you know? <laughs> okay, so what we want to do is we want to help people go straight and uh there's a couple different things that you need to do um do we need all three of these up here i don't think so i think the ghost They're and the ghost hunter and i mean <laughs> ghost hunter <laughs> <laughs> wow whoa it's catching up i'm gonna have to rename this thing no it's already taken so 
I want to help some guys get some stuff straight. Um, Ghosted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I was talking to a guy this week. That and he's, happened in Vegas. He's, yeah, yeah, that was the same. He, he dumped a bunch of money in the car. And uh, he contacted me this week. It was the guy I spent an hour on the phone with um, through Facebook live chat. And uh, he said, you know, the car keeps going left, so I'm giving it left, like you said in your video. I mean, it, it's going left, so I'm giving it left, like you said in your video. And, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, what did you say you did? And he goes, well, every time I give it left, it just keeps going left even harder. And I'm like, well, that's because that's the opposite thing. So obviously, we got to go back over some of this stuff. Even the guys that know what we taught two and a half months ago or two months ago in our, in our first video, um, even though it, maybe it, it, this guy got told that through the grapevine and never saw that, uh, that, that, that video, but somehow it got mixed around in translation um, and it, it was wrong and, and I told him what was wrong about it um, and, and he applied it and it worked. So um, um, there's a couple things like that that I really want to touch on. First of all, we touched on transmissions last week. And the one thing I thought this week that, well, there's a big part of the handling and the way the car launches and something that I didn't cover, and that was the slipper clutch, okay? And that kind of does have to go with the suspension because you can't do what I'm about to say without having your suspension dialed in. That's why we're going over it. We don't run slipper clutches. I've seen more guys so proud of their car doing uh, videos, and I commend you on Facebook this week, and, and they're launching really, really soft, and you can hear the car go, and then it takes off. And... And, and, and there's two things that slipper clutches do that we don't want that hurt a launch, okay, before we get into tune the car to how to launch. Um, and that is that it adds two horrible things, okay? Does it add you a, a small bit of consistency? Yeah, but then you're relying on something like that. And you don't want to rely on the clutch, and here's why. Number one, it robs you of horsepower, okay? That every time you hear your clutch slip, you can hear the horsepower just going right out the window, okay? The second thing is, is it adds an inconsistency. So if you're relying on that to try and help you be consistent and get the car off the line, then as that changes, because slipper clutches, you don't just set them and they're like that forever. I mean, every time you slip that clutch, there's a microscopic little bit of clutch that isn't there no more, and it slowly changes. The um, so you just eliminate that part. Now, somebody's gonna chime in, I know, and go, what about a slipper eliminator? Yeah, if you wanna go slip eliminator, that's fine. Um, but we just run our, our our transmission uh, or our, our slipper clutch nuts all, almost all the way down so there's no slip right here. I want this car to launch at full tilt. Even if you've got a faster car than me, I want to get out of the hole faster than you do. Eight out of 10 drag races are one in the first 60 feet. Okay, well now 60 feet to us is six six 6.6 feet. So, um, or something like that, six feet. So the launch is really, really important with these cars. You know, they're, you know a lot of people are going fast. Everybody's going fast, but... You know, you got to out tree me and then you got to launch as hard as I, and I don't mean me. I mean, I don't mean to, you know, to sound like, you know, this is what, you know, this is any car. You want your car to leave hard as hell. Um, you want people to go, damn, did you see that thing? I mean, my, our, the way I have these cars set up for us, these cars jump up like a jackrabbit and then they just move. So, um, and I want to help you guys get there. But as far as the slipper clutches, if you don't know that much about the suspension, Please follow along, and if you have any questions, get a hold of one of us. But I want to help you set the suspension up so that you can eliminate or lock down the slipper, and you can leave hard as heck. Okay, um, so let's let's get to that. First of all, um, Randy, what's the first thing we do in the front end of the car? What's something that we leave in the car? Leave in the car? Something that that, that a lot of you see a lot of people getting rid of, but we leave it in the car. Oh, the travel. Okay, so. Everybody wants to know how to lower their cars like this, okay? This car is slammed right now, wouldn't you guys say? The thing is on the ground. Do you know what actually is, is lowering the car like that? It's not because I put limiters in it. It's the car's own weight, okay? Throughout some of these, the reason why I figured out some of these tips that I'm going to give you guys tonight about suspension is because I followed the path of the chassis and the car's natural movement. And if you don't disrupt too much of what it wants to do, you just guide it. Um, it works really good. So what happens if I am one of those guys that wants to lower it and I put uh, limiters in so that when it lifts up, if it does, it only dr the droop only drops that much and then the front wheels come off the ground. What, why, why, wouldn't, why wouldn't I want my shocks to go down further, Ricky? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, if you don't, you lose steering. And what happens when you lose steering when you're racing somebody fast? 
You gotta pedal. If you gotta pedal. And what happens when you pedal? In my case, I got lucky and won, but in the other cases, you Nine times out of ten, you're gonna lose, (laughs) okay? Um, Nine times out of ten, I put my car on the track, and and I'm gonna make a straight pass. My cars are known for it, and it's gonna be fast as heck. And and if you gotta pedal against me, um, you're gonna have a tough time. You know what I'm saying? And that's 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 what I want to eliminate. I want you guys to still be in control of the car, okay? So what we do is we don't we use the stock slash length front shocks. We use the plastic ones. People go, you got all that money in their car to use plastic shocks. Ricky, why do I use plastic shocks? They just work. They flow smooth. No, what's the number one thing? <laughs> They're light. They're light, okay? <laughs> one aluminum threaded body shock weighs as much as two or three of my shocks. And if these shocks are valved right, which they are, and I can set them up right, then there's no reason to run a fancy shock because it's just adding weight to the car. Along with a, nut, a lot of aluminum, like, see this, and don't get me wrong, the aluminum stuff is nice, okay? The bulkheads, the this, the arms, um, and we do use some aluminum, but for the most part, the aluminum stuff is a tank. If you've got a front bulkhead and a shock towers and arms and everything that's all aluminum um, and these big heavy duty MIP CVD axles, um, you're gonna have a car that's gonna weigh five and a half pounds and that's not what you want. I mean, these little motors only do so much and the more weight you put on them, the more it slows it down. So um, we use, starting up top, we use the stock plastic shocks and then we do not limit them in the front, okay? What we do is we let them drop. So my car can dig that hard. And my car, even with the body, is on the ground. It's slammed at a dead stop on the line, okay? The second I punch, and what I mean by punch is, like I said, I leave full tilt. I don't roll into it. I don't rely on a slipper clutch. Um, I don't have a lot of of softening value in the tune of the speed control and I just leave, okay? And that's how I want to set the car up because that's how it's going to be fastest. So when it leaves, it pops up. And I want to, not only are you gonna lose steering, but when you have a limiter on the inside and you've lowered the car manually, when you pop up, you're disrupting. Now all of a sudden, the chassis is going to be, or the, the motor is going to be lifting something heavier because you're lifting everything off the ground. You're not lifting that much weight when you just let the chassis come up, okay? So if you can let the wheels droop down in their stock off-road form of a shock, then what's gonna happen is when you lift, you're gonna not only retain steering, but you're not gonna be lifting as much weight. So you might not have to pedal, okay? And that's really, really important. And the next part is really, really important. Um, I'm gonna let Randy cover it. Um, And this is one thing, you guys, especially if you guys have a car that, you know, goes out five feet or goes out 20 feet and then starts to lean and then just leans really hard and it just shoots off that way. This is how we eliminate. I've I've fixed more cars as God is my witness. There's minimum four or five cars at my race, every race. And the guy, I'm seeing him out there practice. I'm in my pit and I'm like, I got to go help that guy. So I walk out there and I go, hey, can I take a look at your car real quick? And nine times out of 10, they usually know who I am. I am, So they're like, sure, you know, help me out. You know, they know they're having problems. And I give them a little wedge adjustment. And I tweak their bar and explain to them, which we'll explain later, but I explain to them a couple of things. And not 10 minutes later, 20 minutes later, I'll have that same guy coming up to my pit and going, man, I don't know what you did, but my car is just working. And that's what I want. That's what I want out of this, right? I don't want to go out there and have, you know, a bunch of guys spinning out, not having fun. And I'm the only one out there winning. That ain't winning. You know what I'm saying? I want guys that are almost as fast as me or just as fast as me that I got to work to beat or it's no challenge, you know? So we want to not internally limit. Now, now what guys, one of you guys tell me what is making my car so low then? The weight of the car. The weight of the car. The weight of the car. If you want your car to look lowered, it's going to do that just sitting there for pictures or on the line right before a race. No matter what you do to the suspension, if the car works, it will lift. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm eliminating, lifting some of that weight and pulling it up and I'm, I'm keeping my steering and that's why we want the droop. Okay. Um, does it look a little funky when they're up? Yeah, but these aren't real race cars. And I think that like a, you know, a 70, 30 or a 90, 10 drag shock setup kind of works the same way. So um, that's what we're doing. It helps with weight transfer. You're not lifting as much weight and you keep your steering. Now, what's the one more vital part that I got in the front end, Randy, that keeps this thing from not darting off? Because it's funny because I still have three quarter inch, or no, I have a half inch more of shock that I could go. But look, oh, when I move my car, it's stopped. You limit it so you can't, so it doesn't want to dip to one side or the other. If it stops, it'll hit. Exactly. Keep it, keep it from wanting to rock or roll, roll out on you and take off. Okay, so if you get a diff, 
back here to unload just a little bit coming off the line and you get more slip out of one side or the other, okay? It could throw the car off a little bit and that might be recoverable, okay? But if you don't have what I'm about to show you in the front of the car, the lean of the chassis with or without a sway bar um, is going to lean past what I call a point of no return, okay? Once you get past that point of no return, there's no bringing it back. You gotta shut it down or hit the curb because it's too lean forward and it's pitched to go that way. So what I've done in here, there's no limiters on the inside, but what I've done in here is on the outside, I got a piece of fuel tubing. And when fully compressed, because the car lifts upon uh, launching, but then the chassis settles and she comes down and halfway down the track, she's running like that again. Well, if it were to lean a little bit, it can't. It's got to stop there. Now, Dan, how do you know it's a half inch? Well, it might not be for your car. And here's how you figure it out. You remember how I, I taught you how to do that? Put all the full weight. Okay. Full so, weight of everything, car ready to run. And so car's ready to run. I got a battery here except for the tires. This is just hypothetically, so I'm holding it up. So the car's ready to run except for the body. You can... Uh, throw something on that weighs similar. You can similar. throw something else. You know, let's say that's the body. Okay, now you're at full weight. And you then you do what? Push on it and let go. Okay. Then what's the next step that's really crucial? I measure the gap between the bottom of the shock and the, the spring retainer. So right here, the bottom of the shock body to the bottom of the spring or the top of the this bottom the top of the bottom spring retainer and that distance of shock shaft that you can see uh that's still sticking out of the shock that hasn't been compressed on its own natural because you've pushed it down and it's come back up so where it's sitting that's where the car wants to sit you're going to cut that distance of fuel tubing and you're going to put it in there as a stop if you notice this car, it's not hitting the ground yet, but I can't go no more. So if this car leans and wants to get off, um, it's not gonna really, it's not gonna pass that point of no return. So it's a fail safe and it really, really, really keeps the car straight. I mean, um, I believe that was the first problem you were having when we first met, right? Yeah, no, cause that's like her bottom mountain dig. You either dig and flip out, well, nah, it didn't, this car didn't flip much, the other one did. It would dig and, and veer and dart and you'd have to back all the way out of it and that was it for that race. So when Ricky got into it, he never had to, 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 to trouble through that problem because I, I, I helped them build the car and I said, look, this is one thing that you need on the car, okay? So what have we learned here, guys? You can go with the stock plastic stuff. Um, it's lighter. Um, it works fine. It's 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 cheaper. Another thing is, is when a plastic part, if it gets hit hard enough that it breaks, it breaks, and you know you got to replace it, and it's cheap. Okay, if you hit something with an aluminum arm or aluminum bulkhead and you don't break it, you don't really know if it's been bent or oblonged or, or anything. It's aluminum. It takes an impact and it creates a memory in, in the in the metal, and that's that's what it holds. So. You know, after you have a couple, you know, brushes on the car, it's not going to be as straight as it was. Things are going to be off. And so, so go with the plastic, guys. It'll save you some money. It's lighter um, and it works every bit as good. So what have we learned? We've learned to keep your droop in the car. Let it come up on its own. Okay. And we've also learned that once the car lifts on launch and it settles, that if you have that extra shock sitting out and it gets off a little bit, you're going to try and bring it back. And it's not going to come back because it's going to lean too hard and it's going to be past the point of no return. It's going to shoot off. So again, full running weight in the car, push it down on a level surface, let it pop back up on its own natural ride height and measure that distance and cut your fuel tubing. Your fuel tubing is made for nitro or cooling systems for boats, RC boats. You can get it any hobby shop at your local hobby shop. Right. Okay. Um, so it's little stuff like this that make the cars work that I've figured out and I want to pass on to you guys that really doesn't cost that much. So let's get the guys that don't have a lot to put in it. Let's get those guys to these cheap little tricks so they can go, dude, that really works. That fixed my problem, you know? So there's, one, on. there's one thing I want to add is yep. that like these red spacers, I don't know if you want to zoom in or not, but they're made out of metal. I've seen guys using those. I don't recommend it because that metal is constantly beating on this plastic piece and eventually it will break. So on what now what now? They're using these spacers. Okay. Oh, on the, the shocks. Inside. 
instead of the fuel so line. The cap. So, oh yeah, yeah, you don't this, do that. When this car comes back down, it's Just hitting this cap. plastic cap. Yeah, so you don't want you don't want, you, you want to use the fuel tubing, and the reason why we do that is because it's rubber. It still has a little bit of give if it really really gets hammered on the ground hard. Um, if you have a solid piece in here, that 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 force of it slamming completely shut. Um, it is going to transfer somewhere else, and he's absolutely right. Eventually, it could do damage or prematurely wear something out. Um, so yeah, use the fuel tubing, guys. I mean, I, I think you get for what two dollars or something at your local hobby shop. You could probably get a foot of it and do ten I think, cars. I think a little bit more than that. A little more. You get more length than that for two. Well, bucks. I don't know, but it's really, really cheap. So, yeah. um, so <clears throat> that's that's that on the front end. Um, now as far as camber and caster, um. You're going to have to play. This is one thing that I can tell you, you know, what it is and what it does, but I can't tell you what it's going to be for your car, okay? And a lot of the suspension stuff is going to be like that, um, except for some of the main hubs that I'm covering, like the stops we've done on the associated car. It's something that transfers to all the cars, so that's what I want to get out there tonight. Um, but there are also little things like toe sets uh, and camber sets that are going to be different for, uh, for every car, and you're going to have to play with that on your own car. Now, this car... And a lot of our cars, I set up to about one degree uh, at full droop. I don't think this thing's down all the way. This thing has about uh, one degree to one and a half degree of, of camber in it. Um, and then the toe out or toe in, you really have to uh, play around. Some race cars uh, are doing one thing and they want a little toe out. Um, something, uh, some race cars uh, are doing something else and they need a little bit of toe in. So that, I can't really tell you where to put your car, um, you know, if you, if you, uh, you know, a good, where's that, that red measuring stick? Get both of those in the square too. So I have some nicer setup tools, but I'm going to show you guys how simple some of this stuff is to set up with maybe some stuff you just got sitting around your house. This is just a ruler. Okay. And so as far as a toe set, okay, which is the front wheels, not leaning. Okay. They are, it, it, it's the toe. Do I have toe in? The wheels are pointed in together. Do I have toe out? And they're pointed out, okay? Well, the way to do that is to pick a certain spot on the very back of the wheel and on the very other side of the wheel and measure that spot. As and then the center as possible. Exactly. And then come back around and take the same measurement. And then if they're, they're off, then you split the difference and you adjust until they're about the same. And that's zero toe, okay? That's a good starting point. Um, if your car is a little bit more squirrely up at the high end, you might want to do something different. Um, if, if your car is, you know, those those are fine tunings. As long as you got the droop in the car and the front wheels don't leave the ground so you don't lose steering. And when it comes back down and settles, if it gets out of control, you have the, 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 the fuel line spacers there at full droop. Um, then a lot of this stuff is, is small stuff. It's not really going to affect the car like this well. This is really going to affect the car. So that those are two huge things you need to have in the front end of the car. Um, Average everyday household products. This is just a cheap ruler. That's probably one of my daughters. Um, I have really nice billet stuff, but that's not what you know. Some of these guys want to see. They're like, man, that's fifty dollars just to set the the camera on the thing. I'm not doing that. This is just a a, a, um, a, carpenter, a, a carpenter square. I kept want to say combination. Um, and what you can do is get this thing on a nice deck down, like a, a cat or a countertop or a table, something that doesn't have a bow in it. I would never do it on the plastic table behind you because it's just it's plastic. So. You can see that, I mean, I don't know, this thing's sitting with no wheels on it. So, now this is not going to tell you what degree you're at, but you don't want about much more than that. If you can see about an eighth inch open at the top and it's touching the bottom of the wheel, and then you want to come over here, and you basically want to have about the same thing. That car is just about perfect on both sides. It's about one and a half degrees. I didn't know it had that much, actually. Um, but so... This won't tell you what degree you're at, but if you're up here, you're about close to about what you see right here with a square on your car, um, on a table, like I said, then this is a good tool for making it the same on both sides. And that's what you want. Um, and there's a lot of things, here's a huge misconception. When you're, a lot of these guys come from racing off-road, they come from racing on-road, and a rule of thumb is you want a neutral car, you know? Um, and a lot of guys think that that is the case with a, with a drag car. That's not the case in the rear end, and we'll get to that. But as far as the front end goes, I want my front end pretty much mirror image. I want it symmetrical. I want the same the same camber on either side, um, the same, um, and stuff like that. So, 
Another problem that people have, and you don't want a drag car is bump steer. If you notice when I go up and down, my wheels aren't doing this, okay? So if I'm up, if I'm up there straight, when I come down, it goes out or it goes in, okay? And then when I lift it back up, it comes back. That's called bump steer, and you don't want that. And what that is, is the correlation of the angles between the lower A arm in a straight line and the steering and camber arm at their straight line. So if you have your A arm here, and your camber adjustment like this, and there's, you know, it makes an A, then you're gonna have bump steer because those angles are gonna change. So the way you can eliminate that, if you notice in here on the steering knuckle, if you come in really closely here, Jamie, um, I don't have my tie rod right down to the steering knuckle. I have a certain length spacer in here. And what that did is when I put this car together, they have a lot of bump steer. The, 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 the wheel moves uh, in or out, I don't remember what it was, as the wheel goes up and down in travel, and I wanna eliminate that. So what I did is I kept adding spacers and spacers, and I finally, for my chassis setup, I got to this big spacer, and it eliminated all the movement. So it goes up and down in a straight line, it doesn't move. Um, Cause you gotta think, let's say your car runs really good um, with your setting at, um, at zero toe, or one degree in, or one degree out, or whatever your setting is, and you have bump steer, well, when it launches, if those wheels do this because it's lifting up or they do that, well, then you don't know wh where you're at. So um, the way to adjust that is with your steering links. Um, that's gonna be your, your, your main adjustment is, 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 is try a little bit of spacer. If you have some of that movement, um, take the outer tie rods off of the spindle block, uh, little arms, and add a spacer under those. And if it, it'll get a little bit better. And then you'll add another one and you keep going until there's, they go up and down on the suspension with no movement. Um, and that's, that's pretty much how I dial the front ends on, in on these. So let's go to the back end of this. Is there any questions before we keep going? Let's see if there's any questions. Jordan Peace said something about his car. Who did? That guy who won. Oh yeah. What do you say? Scroll up. LCG chassis, Tekken RX-8 Gen 3 ESC. With a Tekken 4.5 on the way. Nice. I took the comments over here. It it sounds like he's got a hot rod there. I did the paint. It's Fastback Green from Cretex. Nothing yep. special. Thanks, guys. Keep up the good work with the videos. Cool. Right on. Right on. I Thanks, like Jordan. Proud to have you on our, on our, on our background. Matt. Good car. Nice build. Okay. So. Gabe has a question. Who? Uh, Gabe. I think it's related to someone else, but I have a question. <laughs> when is Jason... For going to go to Uber, dub back on the road. <laughs> okay. All right. Ford. 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 When is who what? <laughs> you can't just say something that makes no sense and then just go, Ford. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, Ford. <laughs> How do you determine springs? What do you mean? Oh, there's a lot of as far as different rates, um, it's probably what he's talking about. Um, you know, again, every car is different. Um, we had, when we built these two newer chassis, we had a problem with uh, the car running straight and running fast with all our tech in it. And it. And when you get up to the high speed, if you let off the gas a little, let alone braking, the car got really unstable. And what we noticed is the front springs were, they were too soft. We had too soft of compound in the front spring. So we went up to the pinks, which is a heavier compound. Um, and it took some of that, that high speed instability away. So you really gotta play with springs. When it comes to springs, guys, they're so cheap. Again, go to your local hobby shop and purchase some springs. Now, they're so cheap, in <laughs> fact, that you could get like, let's say like Team Losi. They have a, a color set of springs and it goes from softest to a little bit harder, a little bit harder, a little bit harder. And maybe they have 10 of them. Each one is color coded so that it's easy while you're tuning it to remember what springs you're running or to log it or whatever. Um, and, and buy a full set of springs and play with it. You know, what works on my car is might not work on your car. And then that only pertains to stuff like the springs or the toe in or certain little adjustments like that. Um, but as far as, you know, again, the, the big hubs of what I'm covering tonight is the, the droop it has and, and the, and the standoff there and how to achieve that. And that goes to no matter what car it is. I mean, that just is something that works. So yeah, I'm running completely but, stock springs in mine. He's running stock is so that great. Means, he's associated car, so it's totally different. I can't tell him to put pink springs on there. They're probably not going to work, right? Yep. Um, Someone asked, what brand springs do you recommend? Um, again, I recommend if you're running a Traxxas-based vehicle, no matter what you have in it. Think pink. 
<laughs> yeah, these are the these are the the springs that I run in the rear. Those rears, yeah, those are rears. Rears. Um, what was I saying? <clears throat> run the brand of your run shop. The brand of your shop. Oh. Or um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, if you're running a Traxxas-based vehicle, run a plastic shock. It's it's lighter or or something. If if you are running a Traxxas-based vehicle, even if you have a nice threaded set of hundred dollar shocks, um, it's still probably going to be the same diameter and build as a Traxxas shock. Um, and and basically that's what why I run Traxxas springs with Traxxas shocks is because they're made by the same manufacturer for each other and they fit. I don't want to have a little bit too small a spring and as it goes in upward oh, travel awesome. and the spring bunches up, it's rubbing on the body or something because that's just impeding the suspension. You don't want to do that. So make sure that your springs fit, guys. Um, if you got cups on the bottom that, you know, uh, for the bottom of the spring that, you know, don't quite fit the spring, don't do, you know, something to, to try and make, just go get the right stuff. It's really, we're talking $2 parts here, guys. So um, the springs, I think I just bought five sets of rear pinks, and uh, I think I paid three dollars and fifty cents a piece for them. So they're very very cheap. So if you were to buy a set of reds and for the rear, and a set of whites for the rear, and a set of pinks for the rear, you can have a whole set for like fourteen bucks, and then you can go tune your car to it. So that's how I pick out spring. It all depends on the car. If Ricky comes over and goes, you know, Dan, this car is having blah 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 problem. Um, and we put it on the road and we send it down the road and then I can sit back and go, okay, I think it's doing this. Let's try this spring instead. And that's how we achieve that. So for that kind of stuff, that, 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 that's where it's a tuners game. So let's talk about the rear. Cause this is where the business happens back here. Again, Phantom products. It's all we run. It's all you're going to see in my cars. That is the icon. Um, the icon 2.0, it is a 4.5 turn motor now people i've been writing it out in messages because people have been asking me off the hook troy um you know you know there's so many off what do i do with these motors? what motor exactly do i want i said go to phantom site you want an icon 2.0 4.5 what that means it's the second generation the 2.0 is the 2.0 generation of the icon series motors but it is a 4.5 turn motor so um, they're really good motors and um, we got a lot of stuff going on Ricky Why don't you tell me about some of the stuff I got going on here that maybe some of the guys haven't seen or they you know, they're not They're not you know that they, they they're not using on their cars probably I mean how many cars all got the same you know sway bars on them, you sway know bars <clears throat> the links for the the wheelie bars stiffen that whole back end up, okay um, The axles I keep seeing a lot of people posting about the axles, okay, so that's a good one to cover. Maybe if Hunter or Jake at our local hobby shop are watching right now, they could chime in once again with that part number. 6852 Thank you. He's got it tattooed on his soul, right? I've been, I've I've been commenting about that. 60 times. So. I've been commenting that quite a bit. It's 62, 6852A. You know what? Before we go, in, I just I was look, glanced over towards Randy, and I noticed that there's a huge yeah. shout-out that we didn't give tonight, and I'm going to let Randy do that right now before we go any further. So why don't you tell us about this another new endeavor that we're we're, we're um, partaking with? Well, uh, Milo Carvalho. So Milo, he's on. Hey, from uh, he's out in Rhode Island. Uh, he actually uh, hit me up to see about if we want to try out some of his cat packs. I have one in my car. I was running it yesterday. Um, I am actually fairly impressed. I have not seen it's not done anything to hinder the performance. <laughs> it's been consistent. Actually, my car sounded a lot better. With then my previous cat pack, I was running in it. And actually, this one, I don't know if it's the cat pack or just the way everything was yesterday. It was just you know, you know, the trifecta yesterday of you know weather, whatever, whatever, whatever. But uh, I'm pretty impressed. I'm definitely gonna, we're definitely gonna beat on them a lot, put them through their paces, make sure that they are as good as they look. I mean, because that's a pretty nice cat pack. That's how it came. That's pretty orange. Uh, Again, though, guys, you know, we, we don't we don't really care about what something looks like. I mean, yeah, I want a professional product, but I care about how this thing works. So, Milo, if you're watching, I'm not playing with you, bud. We're gonna, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna lean on these things hard. We're gonna put some serious voltage through them. We're gonna see what we can do with them. And uh, you know, if 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 what I'm hearing from Randy so far, because he's ran one, this is gonna go in my car. Um, if if what I'm hearing from Randy, um, you know, turns out to be true in my testing and my data logging. Um, then I'm going to be really happy with this. Um, you know, there's a lot of good cat packs on the market. I've always run Mamba cat packs, Ronald Glover of, of Mamba. He makes a great product. You know, we've, I, I believe that we've helped him, you know, reach out to a lot more racers and sell a lot of packs. Um, this is a new guy that's starting out and we want to help everybody guys. So, um, 
You know, if I don't run something and there's another <laughs> brand, um, you know, I, 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 maybe it's not something that I like in my car, but I'm still going to be like, yeah, your brand's awesome. I did, did I do that? I'm going to leave it up like that. I did, didn't I? Like, hey, I'm, I'm right here. Can you film me? <laughs> um, the only thing I want to know from Milo, if he's watching, is what is the UF of the pack? What is the actual ripple UF capacity? Yeah. He's watching. He said he's beat watching. him up. He said beat okay. him up. <laughs> okay, so, hey, guys, out there is uh, a new upcoming thing. It's called, let me take the rubber band off so you can see the, the sticker all the way. <laughs> I got it off first. <laughs> Flash packs. I like the name. It's got a good build. It's actually pretty light. Um, it's got some nice uh, uh, 10 gauge um, fine wire. Uh, yeah, it's got some nice wire, some decent wire on it, um, and we're gonna give them a whirl. And, don't take up much real estate either. And you know what? It's red. It matches my car, <laughs> which again doesn't matter because we care how it works. <laughs> I don't want somebody out there going, well, "Wait a minute, dude! You just said it's just how it works." <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to let Randy give a shout out to uh, to Milo at Fla Flash Packs. Um, you know, thank you for, for trusting in us as a level of racer to be the ones to help you test these things out. That means a lot to me, brother. Um, and uh, I'm going to give you some real, real, uh, real life data on this thing. Um, I'm going to I'm going to send it down the street. I'm going to lean on this thing really, really hard. And you're going to hear back from us really soon. So um, thank you uh, again for the cat pack. And we're going to be putting them in our cars. Um, and I'm sure that what's his name again? Milo Milo Carvalho. M Milo Carvalho. Okay, Milo Carvalho is the uh, owner operator of Flash Packs, and if you're looking for a cap pack, uh, whether you want to go with Mamba or you want to go with Flash Packs, um, you know this looks like a really decent product. So uh, we'll do a tutorial on it in our next. Um, where's my pencil? Missing my pencil. I'm gonna write that down right now. Um, flash Pack tutorial. Ninety four hundred UF, sixteen volt. Wow, really? Ugh. That's a lot. Of, okay. So he's using really decent capacitors. That's a lot of UF. Um, now, is that the total pack? That's got to be the total pack. That can't be per capacitor. Unless he's got, like, like capacitors made of moon rock or something, you know? <laughs> and, and I don't know. what. Are, what let's, uh, in case somebody asks, what are these going for? Uh, I think they're $25 shipped. Yep. $25 shipped. It's not a bad, that's not a bad price. So, um, again, guys. Whether it's this or another product, if your if your hobby shop is hip to the drag racing right now, um, or uh, specifically the NPRC stuff, um, and they're selling cat packs, now's the time to get out. Again, Jake and Jake's performance hobbies for our local guys. Um, maybe even Jake might want to reach out to this guy. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Jake again, their flash packs. The guy's name is. Milo. Milo Carvalho. Carvalho. I'll get that down, Milo. I swear to God, I will. <laughs> just say it like five times. There you go. Jake's Performance Hobbies. Um, but, you know, so before you buy anything, take that into consideration with your purchase. Is this what I want? And if it is, does my local hobby shop have it? You know, can I help him feed his children through this time at COVID-19? I feel like, 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 uh, what's the lady that does the, the, the dog commercials? If you could just... Oh, that oh sad one! Yeah. Don't even bring uh, that up. I feel like sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Sally Struthers? No. no. Uh, Suzanne? No. No. Um, I don't know. It's okay. something know. sad. Let's just. Tina, if you're still watching, I know you know who it is. <laughs> Tina. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just wanted to give a, a shout out to Milo. Milo reached out to us. He, he entrusted us in being some of the fastest guys and, and, and that's kind of a, a, a no brainer. You know, that, that, that makes me feel flattered that somebody's going to reach out to me and go, Hey man, try my stuff. I know you guys' cars are going fast. I want to see what my stuff does, you know? Um, and, and, and so far just by looking at, it, I have to say it looks like top, top notch stuff. Another so. thing I wanted to mention, these are the two S three S ones, I believe. Yes. And he can custom make you whatever size. He has them for us, um, for us. He also, six I saw a post. Three, four, five, six, he, <laughs> he's doing glitch busters as well. So, Ooh, to bust some glitches. Yeah. Sarah McLaughlin. There you go. Thanks. Yeah, that's her. Thanks, Brandon. <laughs> yeah. I knew we can count on you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get into the rear end of this thing. This is where the business happens. This is where all my work goes down. This is my 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 desk at my office when I clock in. So a lot of people, again, are trying to limit their shocks and put them in. They want to lower it. They, they, lower. Want, they want to lower the car. You guys don't want to do this. I'm telling you, you uh, if you want to like, if you just like the look of it, and that's why you're going for it. I'm telling you, if your car isn't as fast as you think it could be, or it's not, it's not, um, 
If you if you personally think that your car could go faster and that it's going really straight or you're having a problem with it going straight, man, listen to my tips and try to apply some of them. I swear they work and there's a big one coming up, the biggest of them all, the cherry on the icing um, of making the, the, the two things that make the car go straight and it happens right here in the rear end. I don't know where Randy went, but he ran out of here like he... He had to pee. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> so what I've done here for the Traxxas guys, and we'll have to ask Randy when he gets back. He looks like he's just got shorter shocks period on his car. Yeah, Randy, how is that? <laughs> but I've been able, I did lower the car just a little bit. I still give it a, it's still got a lot of travel to it, okay? But for the most part, I didn't lower it by internally limiting the shock. I still want to use the full range of the shock. What I did, if you notice, these are the stock shock locations on a two-wheel drive slash-based vehicle. And I've moved those and used the holes to the uh, rear body mount. And what I did was the stock screws from this or the aftermarket Proline ones like I have here, they screw in this way and they're threaded into this aluminum uh, okay. shock tower. So what I did was I have those original screws in the bottom holes, but in the top two, the screws come this way. And I've taken a, uh, I think it was an eighth inch bit, and I honed out the um, in the top two holes and I took the threads out so that my bolt would go through and use the actual plastic of the shock tower with a smaller hole as the nut to hold these tight. So what did I do there? What I did was I took my shocks from the, the stock location and I've moved them in. I've leaned them down. It's something I tried two and a half years ago and it worked and I stuck with it. All our cars are based like that except for Randy's because his is associated. Um, real quick for the associated guys, Randy, did you limit your rear shocks? Absolutely not. Okay, so they're they're full. Now I was they're I was saying full, when you were they're gone, fronts, they're fronts. They are fronts. So you you yeah, did lower it so in a way, but going. you're still using the full shock. Yeah. Okay. So you, anytime you can in any kind of racing, I think that you can get you know away with using the full range of the shock and just making it work right is going to be your best bet. So that's the first thing I did. And what we're doing before we get into the adjustments is we're talking about the build. The first thing I did was when I put this all together and I put the pro line in, and this is like I said two and a half three years ago. I use an RPM mount. Again, why do I use an RPM mount? Because they don't, they're lighter. They're really lighter. I mean, they're, they're one, one sixth lighter. They're one eighth lighter than, than, than your aluminum ones. And if you build what I'm building here and you want to do what I've done here, it's every bit as strong. So obviously I had to adapt the RPM mount to the back of the transmission. Now this is supposed to be a direct fit, but it's not. Okay. Um, I think I covered a little bit about that in, in our transmission segment last week. Um, this plastic piece in the Pro Line is supposed to mimic the tunnel, that motor tunnel that makes up the case in the Traxxas. It's not, if you just bolt this RPM piece for the wheelie bar onto that into the transmission, not only is it flexible and flimsy, but it's also off. So again, a 16th of an inch of this thing tweaked down here, 10 inches out is gonna be a quarter inch. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to look from the front of your car and have your, your eye catch one of the straight lines of the chassis and see this back wheelie bar veer off one way. You want that thing to, it's really crucial guys. And I bet there's somebody watching right now that's overlooked that and is looking at their car right now going, oh man, my wheelie bar is totally stick. Because the, the funny thing is, is when the body's on it and it's on the ground, you can barely tell it's off. You don't know. So until you take the body off the car, you look down the bottom of it and catch one of the straight lines with your eye. So you, I would look at this car for the straightness of the bar from the side you're on right now. You look from the front back and you can tell by looking down there that this bar is comes out the back pretty darn straight. Now, is it tweaked in the back? Yes, it is. But I'm talking about the two main rails of this RCRI bar coming out the side and that's not what we want to do. We don't want this thing mounted like that. Um, so make sure your bar's straight. Now, once I got the RPM all shimmed up, and what I meant by it's not just a direct fit is I have a couple various shims in here. Uh, if somebody wants some close-up pictures, they can email me, I mean, uh, message me on Facebook. Uh, we won't get into that tonight, but the RPM bar goes right onto the back of the Traxxas Slash uh, Pro-Line transmission, and the wheelie bar bolts to it. And then what I had was, is I had flex this way. So when I came, the, the chassis lifted on launch, it was flexing the bar through all the plastic stuff. So how did I eliminate that, Rand, or Ricky? 
these top bars. So these triangulation rods, this is something I started two and a half years ago. A lot of guys, if not almost all of them are running them now. And what this does is this really stiffens up this plastic assembly back here and links it all. And what I mean by triangulation is if this is all one piece underneath, then I've triangulated it by making it pretty much a, a mechanical circle. Um, and there's there's little to no flex there. Now I even want, I still had a little bit of flex left, so I actually added, I took one of the bolt holes and I added a, just a little, all of our cars have them, the little pieces of aluminum. I don't know, do you have any of them? Yeah, so he's associated. He had to make something down here. Looks like a flat plate plate to the back, two screws. With and then dog ear. with one little one one little dog ear or, or landing that's bent up in a 90 tying into the rpm mount and that's on an associated car yeah i had to fully make everything fit on this associated car but it can it be done oh it can be done this is where your creativity comes out RC um, oh, this is a uh, pro sc10 and if you guys want to do something like this to your car and you're kind of stumped because maybe you're not a fabricator kind of guy you just you know you want the car to be solid Reach out to one of us. We'll help you, you know, say, okay, well, this right here, this bolt's got to be mounted to that one, and you need to make a piece of make aluminum uh, to to connect your those two, you know, A and B points together, and that'll stiffen the car up. So Speedways does now make a mount for the Associated uh, Pro SC10. Okay, there you go. So the Associated so guys, they you, have a mount now. you got so an easier way around yeah. it. <laughs> now, whether or not that mount still, you know, even though it's made to fit that car, You'll have to reinforce it the way I've You're seen it. You're still going to have to, it might, it might, because I don't know, I've never had one. Um, I, you might, um, it might still have a little flex in it. So even Randy has the triangulation bars back here, if you could show that. That thing was super flexy because it only went on to the motor, the motor guard, which is plastic, the plastic motor guard. So this thing had a lot of flex in it. The I used as much of the stock holes in this. I had a heat, heat melt and bend up the other arm to go up to the, the top mount, the same one that mounts on the other side just to give it more rigidity because this thing was not meant for this car. So it was really floppy because it's just the plastic motor housing, how it bolted. I put this one in the center Did as much as I could. That's why I put the plate on the bottom to add more, to give it another spot to, to anchor it, to secure it. And then I had to put the bars up top because the thing was still had so much play in it. So. so what are we trying to achieve here? We're trying to achieve the transmission, the bulkhead and the chassis having oh, no God. flex in them. You want them to be one. So another thing that, I do, I don't know if you guys do it, but after you make your shims and you get your spacing and everything all right, you know, or you feel is right, I pull a tape measure from the center of this axle to the center of this wheel. That's another way to On you. both sides. And if I'm off just a little bit, I can use these tie rods right yep. here to adjust to it. To straighten the wheel the wheelie bar out. Yeah. yeah. My, so, my tie rods aren't straight. Now if you have if you have to adjust it to the point to where you've gone in a quarter inch and everything's getting really tight and squished yeah. or it's really pushing it away and bending stuff weird, then you want to rethink you your design. shimming. Um the shimming in here that you have to do is to get these these bolt points for the wheelie bar straight enough that when you bolt the wheelie bar on there, it comes straight out the back like we were talking about. If you're off here with your shimming, um, this thing is gonna jet, it's gonna jet off one way. It's gonna be it's gonna be on there at an angle, and you don't want that. You want your wheelie bar to be straight with the rest of the chassis. Um, so this is for fine adjustments if you're gonna use these as adjusting. They're made to ha to to be a strengthening process, but the adjustability is just an added bonus. So a uh, good point, Ricky. Really, really good point. I, I was gonna walk right over that. Um, okay, so I got a couple questions. Yeah. There's uh, what rear shock tower do you guys use? We use the STRC because it's aluminum and it's thick. And why do I want an aluminum thick? Now, one of our guys, once he picked this trick up to us, he used servo mounts here that had the different holes in it. And that's where he went with this bar. Yeah, just like this. See the servo mounts? But when I first started this, I chose, I was the first one to choose this and do this setup. And why I chose this is because it's so thick and I could drill a hole in the side and put a nut and a bolt and hold that there without using that. So this assembly is actually lighter than his because I don't have the extra screws for the block. I don't have the block. Um, you know, this has got one extra screw, um, whole block. the whole block. Um, and mine doesn't have that. Mine is bolted right to the side of the, of the shock tower. And I had to drill a hole there. And the way to do that is to get the tranny and the, the rear shock tower sitting there. And you basically, you don't want this to hit 
the um, the slipper uh, the slipper shaft here, the top shaft of the transmission. So that's what what located. So I had this side bolted on because I know that's where it's got to be. And then when I was locating this, I kind of moved it up and down, and right where I found a happy spot that it wasn't hitting this, and it wasn't too high, and it was as straight as possible. Um, I, I I marked that and I drilled a hole in sideways. And it, I don't know if you can you really can't see. There's a little nut in there on the back side. I was able to get a nut in there because it's open in the middle, um, and that's why I used that shock tower. And it's and it's aluminum. Again, you don't need. A heavy aluminum, like I said, you don't want to use overly aluminum parts, but there are some places I use aluminum. Why do I use aluminum there? It's strong. Because it's stiff. It's part of the main assembly that I'm trying to stiffen in the back of this car. And this car has literally no flex. It is a solid unit. It is a just a, a <laughs> excuse my French, but a shit brick house, you know? <laughs> I'm trying not to swear. It's, you know, I, I'm a mechanic and I get into shop talk at work all day and then I come home and try and do this show and I'm like, oh, did I just say the S word? So I want to keep this a family show. So sorry about that, but it had to be said. Okay. Yeah, so, my shock tower is stock, in case the associate guys want to know. It's thick, way thicker than okay. the stock Traxxas one, so I just went with it. Now, where did you it. go into with your top bars? I went to the thickest part, the thickest part. You did the same thing I did. You yeah. drilled a hole in the side I of it. You drilled a hole in the side did of it. Did you even the use a nut part. on the other side? No. You used the plastic. Use the plastic. There you go. I went smaller with the drill bit that's smaller than the three millimeter screw. So Randy's setup is the in. ultra, ultra light. Yep. Yeah. That's right. This is a good way, you know, if you don't want to drill a hole in anything and you want to just be able to bolt something together and we're talking maybe 20 or 30 grams extra. It's not much guys. Um, but this is a really easy bolt on way. So he's moved his shocks in. Okay. So he's not using these holes and he used the original shock holes to bolt the servo mount on. And then that's where his rod is running into is the, is the servo mount. Those so are, <clears throat> those are vanquish servo mounts okay vanquish uh do we know what kit or model or i put y'all uh, racing ones on my other car because i was having problems. they're all about the same size yeah. if you buy a standard servo mount whether it's plastic or whether it's it's you know i mean i think a traxxas plastic one would probably work there too and do the same thing you know so um okay so here's what i want to get into right now i want to get into what we've done and how do we use it once you got your car to the point to where it's all triangulated and it's stiff and the bar is straight and you're going to go out and you're going to launch it. Um, there's, those are my rabbits. <laughs> Emma's rabbits. Um, if my, if my daughter's watching, hi Emma, I love you. Um, and, uh, so you got your motor, you got your speed control cars ready to go. Um, you've triangulated, you've made it stiff. Your bar is coming out straight and you go launch. Now, let's say here, here's where I'm, this is what I, this is what I meant by the cherry on the Sunday. Okay. Of the big tip. The wheelie bar. I don't know what that rabbit's doing. He's hungry. <laughs> he just ate. More treats. <laughs> um, the wheelie bar is a huge part of this car and how it launches and the way it launches and the wheelie bar affects and runs everything. Once 99% of the car is, is set up to go straight. Now let's say I am running this car and it's going really hard. I've done five rips and the third one I spun out or, or I it was a bad launch. So I stopped, but four out of five of them, this car went hard left. I mean, I mean, right off the bat, five feet into it, just, just, just went left. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some wedge. This is what I meant by you don't get, get the fact that you want your shocks in the front. It's okay, but get the fact uh, that you want, you know, most RC racing, you want neutral settings in your preload of your spring up here. These spacers, those aren't going to be ever from what I've seen are ever, ever going to be the same on either side. They're not going to, it's not going to be a neutral chassis. Okay. And that's what we call wedge. And we're giving the car wedge. And what I mean by that is let's say this car is going hard left. Wedge works opposite. I can't say this enough, guys. It is the opposite adjustment for what the car is doing. If the car is going left, okay, right off the bat, that means it's dipping down and leaning too hard on the right. So where am I going to put the wedge at? It's going to go on the right. You want the right side to be held up further to keep it from going left. It's opposite, guys. Now, if you have a really, really hard pull to one way, that's where you're going to start. Now, let's say your car is going hard left. You give it some wedge. Wow, it got a little bit better. You do it again. It's still going hard left, but not as bad. You give it some more and you get it to the point to where the car is. Maybe it's, it's going off to one side constantly a little bit, um, but it's, it's, it's now it's making a pass, okay? Well, that's where the tweak, if you notice, can you look down that wheelie bar and notice that I got my bar tweaked 
down on the right side. This car likes right bar, okay? So when it leaves, it was going with my wedge adjustment. I got the chassis pretty darn straight. And then I had a fine little adjustment to do because it was doing a nice rip, but it was consistently after 10 rips, it, or, you know, test hits, this grudge car was going consistently left. So I gave it a little tweak down, same adjustment, opposite side. The right is still leaning too hard. That's why it's going left, but it's doing it at such a small increment that that small increment can be filled up and fixed with a wheelie bar set. Now, why is this important to set your bar every single race, guys? pushes down and twists itself from the weight of the car. Correct. So let's say in 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 different temperatures, different tracks, this this can uh, really really differ where your bar likes to be set. But once you've got the suspension set in the rear and it's going damn near straight, um, and the only thing left to adjust for a slight pull or a slight veer in a lane as you go down making a good hit, um, it is that's where you that's where the small adjustment of the wheelie bar comes in. Okay. So I've gone when I used to race the Ghost. I used to go out and some mornings at 72 degrees, you know, is the hottest it got. So we had a 90 degree tarmac. Um, that thing liked neutral bar, okay? It liked a bar that was set. I could look down it and it was perfectly straight. It wasn't tweaked at all, okay? And then there's other days I'd show up where it was 85 degrees and the tarmac hit 115 and all of a sudden it started going consistently left. So every day before the race day and you do your practice, Make sure you get your bar set. Now that bar set is gonna unadjust itself. Every, just, just get it in your head that it's gonna, it might not, but it's gonna unadjust itself. So if I'm going left and I go down on the right bar to keep it straight, to straighten it out that last little bit, once it hits, my car's hit so hard, it will take that tweak and straighten it back out. It will have done a perfectly straight test pass or race pass but then the next time I run it along with topping the battery off and cleaning the tires for the next round, when I go up for the next round, I'm not going to say, oh, well, I already adjusted my wheelie bar earlier in the day because there's nine out of 10 chance that it, it's going to keep going. It, it, it's going to keep flatten itself out. So once you find and practice at the beginning of the day, that sweet spot that your mm -hmm. bar wants to make a perfectly smooth pass for that fine adjustment, keep doing that all day long and reset it. Make sure it's at the same tweak every time you run the car. That is essential. What happened to you, Ricky, when you ran your first round uh, in Vegas? That was scary. <laughs> I just watched the video last night and went, holy crap. Uh, the bar was not set. The car jumped hard left, let off the throttle. I was thinking in my head the race was over. He had to pedal it. Um, got back in the throttle. The car went right because I was steering right. And luckily I got it straightened out and I still managed to win that round. So, But my heart just about dropped so he overlooked the fine bar adjustment. The car did well enough down the, the straight because the suspension was set up for a, the perfect wedge to launch that car as straight as it as these shocks possibly could make it. There was a fine adjustment that he overlooked on the bar and he almost lost in the first round because he forgot all about you know uh, paying attention earlier on in the day to where the bar needed to be tweaked to run all day. Um, and he almost lost the round, which would have really I sucked. Think, I think it was more along the lines of what you were talking with weather. Because in the morning, too. it was it was running straight in the practice yeah. runs, and then that run, I kind of I did a little bit of what I was doing, and it was completely different. So, okay, so what what do we get from that, guys? We get the fact that that these cars are you know depending on weather or track surface or you know the cars change. So don't think that you're gonna dial this in and go out and it's always gonna work like that because I'm always underneath the hood of this car. You know, um, I I I. I say sweet nothings to this car in the pit I say you know tell me what you need to be adjusted left or, or or next or um but that's it guys if the cars and it's vice versa so if the car is going hard right then you need wedge on the left side yeah left side <laughs> um you don't if i was to be going right so i'm not i'm not turning right what i mean by is i'm launching the car and it's one to go right immediately okay so i'm going to go to the left side and i'm going to hold that side up a little bit so that when I launch, it doesn't want to lean down on that side and take off. And every car is different. Your car might be going left. Your car might be going right. Um, and, and like I said, once you get 90% of that out of it, um, you want to use the wheelie bar for the last little bit. Now, once we get the car going straight, then you can adjust the last part of the wheelie bar. Once you have the car wedged to where it's going straight, and maybe it had a little veer, so you put a tweak in it. If you can get the wedge perfect to where the car goes straight, cool. My hat's off to you. That's a, that's a perfect setup. 
Um, but that's where that little veer, you can get that out of there uh, on a launch or even down the straight is having that wheelie bar. You know, so basically what's happening is I was going left so I, and it was only a little bit, so I gave myself right bar so when I came down, that right one would hit first and hold the rear end up, thus allowing the car to travel straight, okay? Um, and that's why it's really, really important. So the next thing you wanna do is you want to adjust the wheelie bar's height. So now you know where the tweak's gotta be to make it go straight, but let's say it's it's up too high or it's, or, well, two things can happen. What happens if it's up too, if it's up too high? Front wheels come off the ground. Front wheels come off the ground. What happens if it's down too low? Blow the back tires off. Right, you're, 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 you're lifting the rear tires between the front wheels and the wheelie bar wheels and you're just spinning tire. So where do we start to adjust this, up or down? All the way up. So that's what I, that's, that's what I tell people. Is once you get your car to the point where it's going straight, now you wanna adjust how much it lifts, okay? You want to start, we know that too far down is just gonna make it, it's gonna hang the front or the rear wheels um, where you want all the weight to be on launch and you're just gonna spin the tires. So we start adjusting the wheelie bar height by going all the way up, because we know that all the way up, we're getting full traction in the rear to still launch and do a good hit, but maybe all the way up is lifting the front wheels off the ground, and we covered that. You don't want the wheels to lift, um, you know, and even with my long travel, yes, I can put this bar all the way up, and this car will hit hard enough that it will lift the front wheels off the ground still. So then once you got the, them up all the way, and it's if if it's if it's just coming up a little bit, and you still have steering. Cool, run it like that. But if you are up all the way to start the adjustment process, and it's popping the wheels off the ground, then what you can do is is bring it back, clean the tires, adjust the wheelie bar down just a tad, and run it again. And every time, so let's say it pulls like this high at first, and then I go, uh, I bring it back because I want to bring the front wheels down. I don't want to lose steering because I'll have to pedal and lose a race. So I'll come down a little bit on the bar, which the next hit, it'll bring it down to here. Now I want a little bit more. So I'm gonna bring the bar down just a tad more and boom, my front wheels touch. So again, just like with the droop in the front, you wanna let the wheel go down with the ground and stay on the ground to keep your steering, okay? You also want your wheelie bar to stop it right when you do get steering, okay? Um, and I hope that I've, I've explained that well enough um, Let's let's see if there's any questions because that was a lot of information. Um, do, 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 Jeremy Miller's do, watching. Do, do, do. Jeremy Miller, Jeremy, why is that name something like? Oh, 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 oh. Do, okay, do, cool. Do. Uh, shout out to Jill Miller. Um, all my new friends that I've made in the last couple weeks uh, down in the RCDRL down in Texas. We'd love to come down um, this summer, next season, in the immediate future, and 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 run you guys. The only problem with running in other places is this isn't a sedan car with a radio and a box of parts that I can take a battery or two and a charger and get on a plane, okay? Um, the amount of equipment that we bring that I deem necessary to, and this is for me, um, to run these cars is so much that you have to drive, okay? There's some things that they're not gonna let me walk on the plane with and I'd be damned if I'm gonna let them throw them underneath the belly of the, uh, of the plane. So um, one of them being the fact that I'm not gonna tear my bar down in half my set just to make it fit in a suitcase so that they can check it on. This car either travels with the bar on or it doesn't travel. So um, I, I, it's, it would be next to impossible to get on a plane with all of our equipment. I mean, you're talking, you'd have six or eight you know, luggage bags There's full of stuff. Lot. It's a lot. You know, I go and I go to, to have parts and, and everything I need on hands, backup motors, anything I need. You know, you can throw this car. Let me put it this way. If you're in a race with us and you break apart, come talk to me, dude. Because I, and dudettes, um, I can close my eyes and throw my car up in the air and whatever breaks or however many pe pieces break when it comes down and hits the ground, I have a replacement for that. That's how I run my race schedule. So if you don't do that, it's expensive to do and you're at a race and you break apart, um, uh, come see me. I'll help you out and get your car running again so you can finish the day. Um, but in, in what I'm getting to is we just, we bring a lot of stuff and it's not just the spare parts. It's, it's, you know, it's the batteries and the radios and this big three foot long car and you know, the chargers and I mean, it's just, it's too much stuff. There's just no way I could fly. So I don't have a problem driving long distances. Um, the reason why I missed Vegas is I've been the only mechanic for the city of Nevada for two and a half years. Um, and I was on call. I am the police department's mechanic and I get called in all the time to do all kinds of stuff, welding, boarding up windows in, in, in you know, break-ins and stuff like that in the middle of the night. Um, and I couldn't make Vegas. I was on call. So 
Um, I in the last m two months I've gotten a new mechanic on right out. I hired him right after Vegas. I was like, that's it. I got to get another mechanic in here. Um, and he's uh, I'm training him and he's doing a lot of the stuff. So this summer, next summer, I'll be able to start traveling. And I got somebody that can relieve me at work, which is awesome because I want to go to do some racing. I want to go down and race the Texas guys. I want to race Oklahoma. I want to race and go have fun with all you guys. I really do. Um, I want to see what you guys are running and, and, and tell jokes and, 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 and nerd out with RC cars with, with everybody in the nation, if I could, you know, so yeah. Any questions? Uh, Tyler Hart, how do you get that much travel in the, in the front shocks? I may have missed it. If you went over that earlier, tuning in late. Yeah, so what we're doing is we're, this is a stock Traxxas shock. We're using a plastic because it's light and we're not internally limiting it to, to lower the car. The car's weight, watch this, the car's weight lowers the car. So when the car, all the cars pop up when they launch. So when they pop up, you don't want to hold that arm up so that not only are you lifting and lose steering, but you're lifting all that extra weight. You want to let, you want to let the front shocks droop. So that's a huge, huge thing. That and the stops. If if after this video is over, I don't want to get into it again because it was a long explanation and how to do it and stuff. These um, these fuel line stops in here, these are a must-have on all drag cars. Associated, HPI, Traxxas, whatever you're building, okay? So uh, any other questions? Uh, I'm going to race Tim Smith. Well, if it happens, it happens. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there is a trip to Lake Elsinore in our near future. I'll just say it. So it's going to be friendly. And if we get uh, greeted with open arms, then we'll, we'll try and have some fun with those guys. Um, you know, if we show up and we drive seven hours and they say, oh, you guys can't race or something like that. Well, then, you know, the internet will know that too. But absolutely. I, I, I said it before all that stuff started that I wanted to race the guy. Let's not, let's not keyboard warrior here. Let's just let the cars do the talking and, uh, Let's not get into it, but for whatever reason, he didn't take the call out, and uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm more than willing to go down and race. I absolutely want to race this guy. I never ever turn down a race, so I, 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 I hope I win. I could lose, you know. Either way, my hand's going to come out whether he shakes it or not. That's a different story, but you know, I, I, I love all you guys, RC guys, man. I love all the companies. I love everybody who's into this. You know, I love to. I love the hobby shops and I love the mom and pop shops like uh, like one up racing and, and, and flash packs. You know, I love guys trying to start new stuff. You know, anything that has to do with RC cars, I'm an RC guy, you know. So um, you're darn tootin' I want to race. Absolutely. Uh, please talk about the rear sway bar. Okay. So a sway bar in a drag car is going to help eliminate inconsistencies in some of the stuff not working perfectly neutral. Um, and what that is, is that it, it, the, the, the main purpose of, of a sway bar or an anti-roll bar is just that it's to anti-roll the chassis. So these cars, just like a front wheel drive Honda, when you punch the gas in it, it wants to steer to the right. It's got a torque twist to it. Well, this, these have torque twists too. And basically if you see, I, I, I bring this one up and it makes the other one work. See, I'm not even touching that one and it's coming up. So if this car leans over hard enough to where my fuel tubing in the front has to catch it, instead of the chassis leaning all that distance, this sway bar is gonna help eliminate some of the, the twist in it and kind of keep it level so that I can try and regain it. So what the difference is, is if you come up here real quick, um, when one arm goes up and the chassis leans, the chassis does this, okay, it twists. Well, if while this one goes up hard, this one comes up a little bit with it. Well, then the chassis doesn't twist as hard and it twists a little bit, but then comes up evenly. So that's what we're trying to do is trying to, with the sway bar is trying to eliminate uh, um, some, some chassis twists. So, you know, where do you get the parts? Well, this is made of a hodgepodge of, uh, I think a, a rear slash four wheel drive sway bar and some low C team low C links got it at my local hobby shop. Um, so there's no real answer to that. You got to get in. If you want to run one of these, there is a benefit. Um, and, um, you're going to have to hodgepodge it together and, and see what you have in your area or what you can get a hold of to, to make it happen. Um, uh, what pistons and oil? Your uh, the pistons I'm using the number two Traxxas pinion, uh, pistons, which I can't remember. I want to say, I don't think so, but it could be, could be the stock ones. Um, it's got stock shafts in it. Um, I'm running, I believe this car has 30 in the front and 60 in the rear as far as the weight of oils. Um, as long as you buy an oil from a big brand, you know, a Team Losi or a Team Associated or something like that, the oil is going to work, um, you know, consistent with what I'm telling you that I run in my car. And, um, you know, I mean, you got, you know, 70, you know, he's got, what, 70 in yours? And it feels like 120 to me. It just feels thicker because I'm used to a little bit lighter oil in mine. 
Um, so that, that, you know, what weight goes in there, you can't really copy what any of us have because you got to kind of figure out what works with your car. But from all the cars that I've built, and it's been a long of them, 20 or 30 in the front, 60 to 70 in the rear is about, you know, will be a, a, a really, really good starting point where the car will work. So anything else? Jake's watching. What up, Jake? Jake's Performance Hobbies from our park, California. He does. If you guys live in an area where you can't get parked, before you go to Tower Hobbies or A-Main or something, check out Jake's Performance Hobbies. Uh, he sells a lot of drag stuff. They're really hip to the NPRC uh, scene. Um, he tries to keep a lot of stuff in stock. He's got all kinds of stuff. He's got Teakin stuff, Hobby Wing stuff. He's got drag racing stuff. Um, so give him a call. Get a hold of him. 707-586-3375. Uh, uh, they do ship. Anywhere in the low, lower 48, as far as I know, right? You're off your game tonight. Huh? So you're off your game tonight. That's 0 for 2. What do you mean? Oh, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. All the other times, I'm like, Kish, and it makes it perfect. So uh, Jeff, Jeff out of Arizona says, Arizona, meet you there if right, uh, re meet you there and race if goes south. So Arizona, yeah, absolutely. Come out and race down. Okay, uh, so if we go down, and they say no, they're to show to race. up at, at, at friendly wise to. Not only have some fun and race, but to force a certain somebody, you know, to not hide from anything and actually race us and it goes south and they don't want to race us. These guys from Arizona said, hey, we'll meet up. We'll meet you halfway and we'll race you so we can all have some fun. And that's what it's about, guys. It's about fun. So, um, yeah, you know, I mean, without anything, you know, whatever. <laughs> Jeff Bailey. For, I just want to uh, race. Jeff Bailey for a wheelie bar for your SE10 B4. You're going to have to make a custom mount and uh, attach some Traxxas style ladder bars to be your best bet. Um, I That was my first car I built was a B4 base, and I did a flat bar style, and it had way too much flex. And to add, start adding stuff to compensate it, it'd be better off just to make a mount that... I've seen a couple guys make some pretty sweet mounts that bolted to the bottom that came up in 90 in the back to where you can bolt your Traxxas style to it. I mean, it was just simple aluminum, aluminum piece of aluminum piece of sheet metal that was folded at the top. So you can run bolts for the Traxxas style wheelie bar. It was actually pretty cool. Okay. Um, again, the one last thing, I hope everybody got that about the wedge. And that's what I meant by the two big things, the wedge and then the final wheelie bar tweak, because that's, what's going to straighten your car. If you're having a problem with the car going straight, um, and you're getting frustrated. I've had two or three people reach out in the last week and a half. Say, my, I'm just, I put all this money in this car. It will not go straight. Um, I've, I've applied these techniques. I, well, I've told them to apply these techniques and it works. So, um, you know, for, for oval racing and stuff that maybe you might be into if you're already into RC cars before building this drag car, um, it's a little bit backwards. I get that. That's why, you know, some old school racers, uh, especially in my area, when I first started explaining that on my show, they're like, are you sure that's right? I'm like, yeah, I swear to God, it's right. So uh, it does work. If the car's going left, adjust it on the right side. If the car's going right, adjust it on the left side. So uh, anything else, guys? Uh, would you say sway bar in the front? Benefit? No. Is it benefit or since the, or, or no, since the, that's what the tubing's for? Uh, no sway bar in the front. There's no... You're lifting that weight anyway. Um, there's just there's no benefit if you were if this was a road race car, then yeah, absolutely you'd want a sway bar because when you dip, if you were if you were a road car, and you were taking a left hand turn and the chassis twisted this way, and I put a sway bar in the front, maybe the chassis would only twist that much. You see what I'm saying? So that's what it's for. Uh, we use it in the rear because that's where the dynamics of it either going left, right, or straight, um, you know, it, that's where it helps it. But as far as the front end, no, these aren't road race cars. You're not going to see any advantage out of it. There's no point even wasting time or money on it. Was so, that number two piston in the shocks you said? I believe so. That was for uh, Car and Frank. It was either 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 Traxxas does them in numbers, and yes, I have a number two in this. Or when I did the shocks in the Techno, they were the ones that were numbered, and those were, I just remember number two for some reason. I believe these are stock shocks. This is a stock length front Traxxas plastic ultra shock. It's a stock length rear slash uh, plastic ultra shock, um, and that's what I use. So I've changed the oil in them, um, and I think that's about it. They work really good. So. Ventura County would be glad to host a race if everything goes south. We are halfway between you and Elsinore. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. So everybody, you know, and, and yeah, we're why not, not, why not just we're not trying anyways. to say that, you know, that anybody, you know, is, is going to give us flack if we go and try and race or anything. We're just, we're if just, it does happen. yeah, you know, I mean, 
this is something that's been put out there many, many times and it never got, you know, the, the, the fish never bought for, or bit for some reason. And, uh, and so we want to go down and make it happen. And if it doesn't, we got guys chiming in all over the country right now yeah, saying 337 that, would come out to Texas there you go. or Oklahoma and that's run with the, you all. That's the third or fourth people that say, you know what, man, we'll, we'll, we'd love to come race. So these are guys that want to have fun, dude. You know, um, do I win a lot of races? Absolutely right. I win a lot of races, but you know what? If I go race somebody and I lose, I'm going to shake their hand and say, you know what you just beat? You just beat one of the fastest cars in the nation. Good job, dude. I'm not going to get mad at him. So, you know, I'm not going to cause any drama. I don't want any drama. This is a fun sport. You guys tune in to have fun. You guys tune in to learn. Um, I hope that you guys came to our, our, our new page, 707 Street Cars, to bring positivity to it and help the little guy and help the, the kids getting into it. Um, bring something new that we don't know even. Yeah, absolutely. If somebody goes, well, hey, that one thing that I noticed your car's doing, um, this is I actually have that problem. This is what I'm doing. I'll listen to you, man. I'm absolutely always open. You know, as a mechanic and a journeyman welder, that's how a true journeyman can consider himself a journeyman is before I get up to go to work, after I brush my teeth in the morning, I look myself in the mirror and go, you know what? You can learn something today. Nobody ever knows anything or everything, okay? So, um, unfortunately, there's been a couple of gentlemen that, you know, I, I don't know if they think they know everything or whatever, but they didn't want to learn anything we knew how to do, you know? So, we're just going to teach it to other people. So, uh, if you like what we say, you like what we do, you like our cars, um, you know, you want to know a product we're running or something like that, get a hold of me. We're willing to help anybody. I can't say this again. I've said it since day one. Um, I've been helping people for a long time now, thousands and thousands and thousands of people, um, not just in this area of RC sporting, but in other areas too. So, um, got a no steering linkage. What type of servo horn do you use? No, that's a really good question mark. We're going to get into that right now. And the reason why I want to do this is because we have reopened the door to the Black Widow chassis. And there are some guys that have purchased these chassis and they're building them. And I've had a couple questions come at me. Well, you know, everything bolted on for my slash, but except for this one thing or these two things, what do I do there? Because there are no instructions with the chassis. This is more of a master builder kit. Um, this is for somebody who wants a true custom car that, you know, uh, really, really, really just wants something that works. Uh, and I believe it's the best chassis in the world. So um, why do we use the chassis? Um, the chassis is, is a legal, can you move that just over just a little bit? Um, it's a legal chassis. It, it retains uh, the regular uh, wheelbase. I like it because there are so many nice chassis out there, you guys. Um, there's a lot of people doing a lot of stuff with carbon fiber and G10 and there's just all kinds of different designs on it. It's awesome. You know, that's what we want, right? We want companies to, uh, or, or people to start companies or, you know, to get in it with all kinds of different products. So there's a plethora of options. The reason why I chose this one when it first came out was two reasons. Number one, there wasn't a whole lot yet out. Okay. This is one of the first, I actually wanted to build a drag car, but I didn't want to build a stock slash car. I just, it didn't do anything for me. And I saw one of these in my local hobby shop. They were pricey and um, I, I, I bought one and he only had a couple of them. So I bought one up really quick and I've turned it into a winner. And after owning a couple other chassis and all these other new chassis coming in on the market, I think there's a couple key points with the Black Widow that make it work. Number one being this top deck. A lot of the top decks are, are up high like this. And what I mean by top deck is this second layer right here. Without any kind of second layer of carbon or G10, just the one main chassis would have flex in it. So this has been added, probably on this side better. Um, this has been added to stiffen the chassis and it's really, it's only as thick as it needs to be. It's a quarter inch wide and it's really low slung for low center of gravity. And I think that's one of the part of the reasons why this chassis works good is it doesn't have any major com chassis components sitting up an inch and a quarter off of the main plate. So um, another main key is I've had guys say, why doesn't my front end fit on this chassis? Well, this chassis is designed to complete, you leave your shock tower on your, sh on your, sh on your bulkhead and you take your hinge pins out to your A-arms and you flip the bulkhead around. And the three holes that used to be in the front on a slash are actually what bolt, or the, yeah, the two, the two bumper holes that usually were on the kick up of the bulkhead that you know held the bumper is actually what bolts to the chassis. So then you have the three holes that used to bolt to the old slash chassis that are now your bumper. And you can see I'm making custom bumpers for these things because I have a lot of the plastic and it's cheap. And anyway, so the bulkhead is turned around backward. Now, what does that, what does that do, Ricky? What does it eliminate? The angle of the arms. It, it eliminates the angle of the arms. Um, 
I don't know, you know, usually in road racing, the more caster that you have, the more you lean the shocks back and lean the suspension so it works it in, so that suspension doesn't go straight up and down like mine and it leans back like this and goes up and down at an angle. The more that you can have, the harder the car is gonna handle. We're not handling here. So maybe that might be part of it, um, that it's just a straight, straight down, just drop for the arms, but you know, they work like no other car I've ever used. So. When you use this chassis, you turn the bulkhead around backwards and the arms do not work at a castered angle anymore. They are completely level with the ground. They're going up and down level um, like this, that this was the A-arm and the wheels out here and the bulkheads over here. It's going up and down straight. It's not at an angle like this, okay? Which is something you want for road racing or for off-road to, to bite hard and steer. Now, the couple things that don't come with the kits that are must-haves is on the right side here, You'll notice that the tie rod I'm running is just the stock tie rod Traxxas one that I bought for this car when I built it. And the other one's a different color. The reason why is this is a funky length and I wanna to talk to Steve to see if we can spend the extra two bucks on the kits and get this rod put in. What I'm using here is a 72 millimeter by four millimeter thick thread. So it threads into the original Traxxas uh, ends. And uh, I needed a longer one. Why do I need a longer one? So the servos, the servos, the servos offset. The servo, everybody knows that the, the horn goes to one side. Well, this chassis doesn't have, I'm eliminating, it's a good thing and a bad thing. So the good thing is, well, it's a good thing and a good thing. The good thing is, is I'm not using the bell cranks, okay? So the bad part is I need a longer rod to make it to that longer side of the servo. And the second good news is, is by doing that, I'm eliminating all the weight of the four bearings, the posts, everything that the that stock bell crank steering system sits on. So all I have is two tie rods from the servo right to the ground. Again, the other thing it doesn't come with is when you flip the bulkhead and the shock tower around and now your shock's behind, this camber bar right here used to be on this side when it was flipped around and bolted right to there. It didn't need anything. And if you notice in here, I had to use a standoff. I think that that standoff is the same thing whether you're using a carbon fiber tower like I am or a plastic tower like the Ghost. Either way, you need a standoff there. So that one long tie rod and the two standoffs to make the camber go around the shock are, I think, three little tiny pieces that would be cheap to add to the chassis that the chassis needs to run because no matter what you're putting on this, if you buy one of these chassis and assemble one of these cars, you are gonna come into that problem. Um, other than these spacers, you, I didn't need anything else to modify flipping stuff around. It all just fits together. And then if you notice in here really close, the, 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 the top bar or the top plate of the chassis, the stiffening rail, ties into the bulkhead with a nut. Uh, these chassis come with titanium hardware, so they're nice and lightweight. Um, and I really like them. I mean, it's, they, they just freaking work, guys. If you can get one of these. So what are the chassis on the website? Like 119, I believe. Okay, so they're not that much money, you know? Uh, shipped and everything, 130, 140 bucks. And you got, I mean, to me, the best chassis on the market. So um, if you're going to build one of these chassis, you're going to run into these problems. You're going to need a longer tie rod. You're gonna, you don't have to use aluminum right here to stand the camber rod off. You can use... Um, you could use this these has, and stack them. You this could. This size plastic. Yeah, on the Ghost, I didn't have anything else, and I used some some plastic pieces that I had, and they've always been on there. They work great. So if you notice, his camber bar had to go around the shock now, and then attach to the shock tower. So he's got these these plastics, you know, the plastic spacers right here to move the camber rod out. So the other thing you can do too is change the ends. There's different length tie rod ends. So this, if you see, there's a short one here and a long one here. If you need to do that to make your tie yeah. rods work, that is an option. Okay, so does anybody got any questions? Is there anybody out there with a Black Widow chassis that's had some of these problems maybe? Or uh, any questions about anything we've talked, guys? Well, there's one that was up here. It says, what type of bearings do you guys use? Um, different bearings run than others. Use um, different bearings than anybody else? In the four corners, I use uh, ceramic bearings or... Um, What's the guy's name? Fast Eddie's. Fast, Fast Eddie's, Eddie's bearings. In the transmission um, that has some oddball transmissions or um, bearings in the Pro Line, um, and I just used, I've never had a problem with anything other than the Pro Line bearings. Um, would I benefit from trying to sort out and find some ceramic bearings for the tranny? Maybe. Um, but I want to use uh, the, the, the bearings that come with the transmission um, are, are more than ample enough to, to make it work. 
Um, what about you for bearings? I use Fast Eddies. Fast Eddies and everything? Yeah, okay. I can find all the sizes I need, and they're all really good, really good price. Okay. I think it's like a buck a bearing. And I'm sure a place like Fast Eddies or your local hobby shop that maybe has an assortment, um, a lot of hobby shops do carry Fast Eddies stuff. I could probably find the bearings uh, that I need for the transmission in ceramic. I've never had a problem with it, you know. Um, I'm I'm a, a firm believer in two things. Number one, always trying to improve, but if there's certain things that are strong and not broken, don't fix them. They ain't broke, don't Lean on them harder. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? How many followers we got still watching? 94. Nice. Again, Nick, guys, thank you for uh, for all the support. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go on. Um, <laughs> Ross wants to know what servo horn you guys are running. Oh, uh, you want to go uh, almost the same place where you got that uh, that notepad under the body? Is a couple brand new servo savers. So, because I'm going straight, I can't find anybody that has. Okay, so first of all. You can buy a servo horn that is aluminum. You can buy really trick ones and stuff, but they're usually singular. They don't, they're don't. they not really wide like this. And I needed it wide to do the assembly here. I need one side and then, you know, half inch over, it's got another side for the other tie rod. And I can't buy that piece in solid. On the Ghost, I actually originally found like a, it was an older company that they're out of business. And I went to an older hobby shop and I found them. They're better than the Kim Brews, but they were still plastic. And it was a servo saver, a big one like this. And I ended up gluing it. Um, so it was solid and it worked okay. Um, but you know, things get old, things wear out. We, you know, he updated the servo in it from what I had in it. Um, and I actually, when I built this car, I had a different chassis on this car and I just went to the black widow not too long ago. And when I did, I know I needed to go back to a big servo saver and nobody makes a solid piece. That's this wide, a horn this wide that I know of. So I tried to find something with the tight the tightest tolerance I could that didn't have a bunch of wiggle in it and play in it. And actually what I came up with was these uh, these HR Racing aluminum ones. I don't remember what I paid for them. They weren't too bad. I think they were 15 or 20 bucks. Um, and they have next to no play in them. They're really nice. They're trick. They're all billet aluminum. It comes with the extra splines for different servos. Um, they're a really nice quality you know piece that's really showy. Um, and they, they work. You know, I bought... There's not a whole lot of people making big servo savers like this out there. So I bought like the three or four that were on the on the on the market right now from all over. And these are the ones that I found that work. So I ordered a couple of them. Um, try to get, you know, I actually kicked myself. I probably could have just talked to Jake about this. But when it comes to just I mean, they're constantly buying and trying new little stuff. And Jake's got so much going on at my local hobby shop and the stuff that, you know, we we we. We support Jake 100%, but there are some things where I can't be calling Jake every 10 minutes. Hey, Jake, I think you can get some of this stuff in. Hey, Jake, can we try this stuff? I mean, I would drive him crazy. So um, this is one thing I actually reached out right to HR and got them. Um, they're really good parts. If you can, get one of these through your hobby shop. Jake, um, if you're watching still, um, this is a really good product for the drag racers. Um, you know, what does a servo saver do, guys? Hey, if you servo But server. how? Uh, spring or some kind of mechanic mechanism inside to allow if you get an impact on the wheel that that's where the that's where all the, all the impact goes is in the saver not so you to mean to tell me if I hit a wall or another car in a race and I have a solid arm on my servo I could damage my servo oh yeah you okay pull the gear out so this thing is actually spring loaded and the part that is bolted onto the servo is independent of the part that bolts onto the tie rods. So if I were to get a sharp jolt, it wouldn't jolt the, the, the steering servo because the spring would take up some of that, that jolt. Now granted, for fine precision stuff, you wanna use, a lot of my cars uh, have bell crank systems that have servo savers built into them. Um, so I can run a solid arm and have, you know, uh, the, the most precise way to set up steering with no slack in it is without a servo saver. But if you have to, if you want a servo saver, or again, it wasn't so much that I wanted a servo saver on this, I'll run a solid one, but nobody makes something that's that wide so I can put two tie rods coming into it that's solid. So I I chose to go with these. So um, if you don't want a stock Traxxas one that wiggles all over the place, um, buy one of these. Jake, if you're watching, get these in stock. Um, I highly recommend them. I think that, some. I think I saw okay. something that was like similar to that, possibly. Well, that was it another. Been, it might have been a, a single one instead of a multiple hole like that. So the ones that I got from Jake are the Kimbro. Oh, okay. Oh, he had Kimbro ones yeah. in. Oh, okay. Okay, and Kim, Kimbro's a great company. Um, and and I remember after after looking at this one, it's it's got next to nothing in it. I mean, it's it's a pretty pretty darn nice piece. I run them on all three of my black widows. Okay. 
Okay. Um. Anything else that? Uh, what servo was that? Which one? That's probably the one in your car. There, the uh, mine. The um, save box. This is what I. If you go to your hobby shop and you ask them, dude, I want you to get me a hold of a Savox low profile servo. So the width is a standard width of a standard one ten scale. I guess you would call it servo, um, but it's a really short body. Um, this servo is about sixty or seventy bucks. Um, you know, and I, I talked to a guy a little while ago. He goes, man, I just use a, a stock twenty dollar tracks of servo, and if that's fine, if, if that's all you can afford, it will work. Um, however. With the plastic gears that are in these cheap servos, even though it works good at first, after a couple race days, you're going to start getting slop in that thing that there's nothing you can do about it, and it's because it has plastic parts in it. So if you want a part that's going to be dual ball bearing, metal gear, um, it, it, it will not wear out in a couple races and have slack in it, and, the, and the, the actual spline that sticks out of the servo that moves actually has a wobble in it, and that was the problem why I got rid of some of my, my other servos was that these ones, they just, they have ball bearings and stuff. They're, they're metal. They don't wear out like the other ones. So if you don't know how good a good servo is until you can actually get a chance to use one, uh, if you're out there and you have the means to get, you know, a $50 servo or a $60 servo like a Savox or, a, you know, the other ones that are nicer out there um, over a stock one and you can afford to do that, once you put it in the car, you're going to really, really notice the difference. You're going to be like, wow, it just feels so much more precise. So, and, I, and it is, it totally is. It's, it's a, it's a pro level servo. So, um, and I think Ricky's got a, an, fancy, fancy an, MKS. an MKS servo, which is, you know, just comparable. I mean, they're. You know, um, MK, MKSs are great servos. They're a little bit on the pricey side. So if you're looking for this kind of quality in a cheaper servo, um, something that's a little bit lighter on the, or a little bit nicer on the, on the, on the wallet, um, I would, I would suggest a Savox. They've never let me down. I have them in all my cars. I mean, everything, my, from my crawlers to my boats to my, I mean, you know, so I, I like to save it. What about uh, any other questions? Oh, I see there's two different weights in the, in the savers. I wasn't sure the difference between the heavy duty and the medium duty for the servo savers. I guess he said uh, that one's heavy duty. That one's medium and that one's heavy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got two different... Uh... Oh, I didn't even <laughs> notice that. <laughs> I thought they were just servo savers. Back in the day, if you had a servo saver, they only made one kind, you know? Okay, so I would say that the heavy duty probably has a heavier spring in Maybe it. Maybe for like an A scale car versus a 10 yeah. scale car, we only need a medium duty. Crap, that means I have no idea what's in that car. Yeah. If it's black, it's probably the heavy duty. No, I think they come in all different colors. Because there's a bunch of different, like they'll be like uh, black, red, and blue, and then black, red, and blue again. And that must be why the different colors were mm -hmm, they listed two or three times. Uh, I don't know. Or maybe maybe that is the color. I don't know. I didn't even know it had a, you know, so what do I know? <laughs> How often do we really use steering in a drag car, though? All you turn time. around at the end. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Um, our cars and my technology and in my in my my designs that I've put into a lot of these cars, um, there are days where I could literally put my hand in my pocket and squeeze the trigger, and that thing just freaking goes straight. There are days that. You know, it, I have to work a little bit harder for it. Every race day is going to be different. Maybe the race day will change with weather over the day. There are, you know, 50% or 60% of the time, I am sawing on that wheel to keep that car going straight. Um, these cars are so fast that it is a wild, you know, two and a half second ride down that, that, that quarter mile strip. I was going to say eight second ride because they're bulls, but. Brandon that, Wallace says, nope, the colors are for each weight. Oh, they are. Okay. He, Thank you, Brandon. Seen. Okay. Um, well, there you go. You learn something new every day, right? Yeah. Um, so the different colors, I bought the blue one because this was blue. I was actually going <laughs> to think about giving it to Ricky because his car is blue, but, um, I don't, I think I'd probably want, I'd rather have the, the heavy duty, uh, what's well, cool that they're doing that in different weight springs for the saver, because I don't think the other companies are doing that. They just put one spring in them and then that's what you can, that's what you can buy. So that's really cool. Hats off to HR. That's, I've never even heard of them, uh. Having different models like that. That's pretty Ro cool. Ross Calhoun asks, if nobody's going to ask, I will. <laughs> What's up with the foam on the shock tower? That is merely to stop the body from rattling. It's a pillow. Keep it tight. Yeah, so when he puts the body on, again, it's something else that I figured out um, a long time ago. The bodies were rattling and jumping around. They primarily do it in the front end. And so I put a piece of, I don't even know, my foam's over there, that orange piece. Um, Mine 
Um, when you put the body on, you have to push the body down into the foam to get to the hole on the body clip that you want, uh, or on the body post that you want. And when you do that, you're adding pressure between the car and the body and it's, and it's holding it more firm. So that's what it's to do is to hold the body more firm is the foam. Doesn't weigh anything. Um, yeah, it's a little bit ugly, but man, it works and we don't race the cars without them. So I know Randy doesn't. Do Randy's it. not using it. Try it. Well, I got a different style uh, body true. mount. Yeah. I only have one option, and that's one hole. It is what it is. Is there anybody out there that's watching right now that I didn't cover something for and how to make the car go straight with the adjustments on the rear end, or maybe they missed something, or they want me to go back over it? This is something that is crucial, guys. The opposite side adjustment. So if the car goes left, you give it a little bit more downspring on the right. Um, that is a crucial adjustment for making one of those cars. If you have your shock uh, spring preloads, uh, spacers, or collars, twist collars um, on your shock, and they're even at the same, or you haven't adjusted them at all, and you think it's something else, and the car keeps going one way, and it's going that way consistently, um, then that's your problem. You have the car set up neutral, and or, or make or, sure you have no drag in your. Uh... That's another thing that we'll do it too. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't even go over that. Good point, uh, Randy. Before I, when a car is all built, before I even think of bolting the shocks on there, I want to make sure the car's done. Well, I just put it together, Dan. I just got to put the shocks on. So what are you talking about? Well, you got to make sure that without the shock there, I can lift up this A-arm and let it go, and it drops on its own. If you lift an A-arm up without a shock on there, and it comes down slowly, or it goes down to a certain point and stops, and then you can physically push it down further, then you have something bound up, like right here in the, right here in the corners. Maybe you have a little burr on the on the very tip of the A arm and it's and it's hitting the bulkhead or something, but always make sure your suspension goes up and down freely before you bolt the shocks on because if you have one side that's free and the other side is not, do we have a problem like that not too long yeah. with one of your cars? This one right here. Yeah, that car. What, what did it end up being? It could be a bent hinge pin, could be a, 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 a shock shaft. So what it what it was yeah. were these aluminum bearing carriers or caster blocks were a little tight in the RPM arm. So I had to take a Dremel and kind of shave a little bit off. And now they are full. Okay. Full drop. So we'd pick, we couldn't figure it out and we had the car wedged right and we'd pick up the car. And as we picked up the car off the ground, the wheels didn't both come down. One, one came down and the other one kind of stayed up a little bit. We knew we had something, you know, if we took the shock off and there it was, you could feel it. So we had to search around and see what part was rubbing on the other or, or the shaft was, was too tight, like he said, in the hole. And it was holding the suspension from dropping on its own. You got to have a suspension, even with a real race car, you got to have a suspension. Before we put shocks in the back of a road race car, we, we have two guys on either side. We lift up the rear end and we drop it while it's on the lift and we want to make sure it comes back down and there's no binds in the suspension because that will then you'll be chasing a ghost and you have no man I, i'm doing the wedge thing like you said and it's just not work well you probably more or less have an arm or something in the suspension that's binding so the adjustments that you're doing aren't making any, any sense you got to make sure that your stuff isn't binding before you even start setting these things up for the shocks oh uh, what about having zero degree hubs in the rear um this is something I haven't done a lot of testing. I've spent a bunch of money in Custom Works arms and stuff. Haven't really got into it. Um, the reason why is I'm afraid that if I straighten my rear my rear wheels out, I, I'm a I, I'm a firm believer that a little bit of toe in. I, I granted I know this is a lot for dirt and stuff, but a little bit of toe in helps the car track down straight down the track. Especially something small. Like if this. you if you if you straighten the wheels out to zero, I think it's going to be more susceptible to, to catch to get to catch a dart one way or the other. Um, so the, the 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 little bit of toe in. Now there's guys that have put I think stuff together wrong or whatever, and they're like, dude, why do I have like eight degrees of toe? In? If you have if you have a bunch of toe in in the rear, then you have something on the wrong side when you assemble the car or something. You should only have a little bit in the rear. Um, but yes, a little bit. I like a little bit of of toe in in the rear. Um, again, if you look at the car from the top, what we're talking about is these two wheels or these two wheels being towed in together or towed out. Um, and in the rear, all RC cars, I think, are built with tow in. So mm -hmm. um, your real car that you drive has got it. Uh, the Razor's got it. Um, yeah, so I mean, tow in helps the car help, helps the car track down the road. Uh, axle, what axle carriers do you run to set the tow? What's stock? Yeah, I'm running a stock setup. I'm running stock RPM arms and the Traxxas uh, aluminum hubs because they're they're aluminum and the stock ones and the RPM ones seem to twist a little bit too much. 
That's one of the things I wanted to eliminate even out of the RPM arms with the Custom Works arms that have the adjustable toe. Um, if you want to grab one of those over there real quick, thank you. Um, is the fact that the RPM arm even with the aluminum hub has a little bit of twist in it. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little bit of twist in that arm. And these arms, which are the adjustable ones from Custom Works, are really rigid. They don't have any twist in them. So that was one of my main reasons why I wanted to try them. Uh, and I still might, maybe I'll set them up, I'll, I'll measure what this one is and set these up to be the same so that at least I have that feature. Um, are the Traxxas wheelie bar tires direct bolt on to the RCR I wheelie bar? I answered them. Oh, you did? Okay. He texted it. Oh, I've yeah. seen that. So the, the Traxxas wheelie bar wheel comes with its own little bolt that is the axle for it. And yes, it bolts right on there except for one thing. You if you were to, yeah, if you were to bolt it directly on, the wheel would hit the side. So if you notice the red in there, I have added a spacer to move the wheel out so it doesn't hit. Let's show them the newer version of the bars where the axle wheel bolts to the axle. Yeah, there you go. Or do you want to see the new RCR? Probably. Would you do me a big favor? <laughs> oh my go God. in my bedroom and get in this car. Okay, under. So there's another R RCRI product that a lot of people don't know. Um, if you want to try them, they're awesome. Uh, I'm thinking about going to them here soon. When they came out, I was like, Psh, how much could the Traxxas wheelie bar wheel really weigh? They're heavy. They're like 23 grams a piece. So the aluminum Traxxas wheel here and the tire with the bearings, no axle, but the, the two bearings, the aluminum wheel and the tire weigh about 23 to 25 grams. That's heavy. I saw those on the website. These are the RCRI wheels that are made out of Delrin and these weigh, wait for it, six grams a piece so you can have six to eight of these wheels weigh the same as one of those traxxas wheels so if you got a couple extra bucks i think they were like uh 10 bucks i think they sell them individually steve sells them individually and it's like 10 bucks for one side and then one side comes with the uh the wheel and the bearings and i don't remember what else but they're, they're pretty cheap and they're really really light um, and you know, you know, if this is 23 grams and 23 grams, that's 46 grams. And if these are five grams a piece, take that off. So you're saving 36 or 34 grams of weight, uh, by just switching over to these wheels. So, um, I put them on my daughter's, uh, 12 turn kid class car. Um, cause you know, it's only got so much power. So I figured the lighter, the better. Right. Um, and, uh, but these were the wheels that were on the car when we had the hobby wing in it and they, they worked good. So yeah. Thank you. Um, Tyler Hart said, good luck setting them up. I can't get them to the arms. I can't get the arms to work. The arms. The arms probably yeah. You know, I, there's just the only, the one thing that, that I, I actually tore this car, one side of this car apart and I was going to put them on. And what I noticed is that the holes for that are pre molded and drilled for screws in the arm um, are in completely different locations that I have my shocks right now. Not to mention that the RPM ones, I've drilled my own hole and threaded my own hole for the sway bar link to come down and just screw in. And I really don't have a whole lot of room to do that on one of these. Um, and even though I could do it and stand it off and stuff, there's not, there's just not the meat like the RPM ones to screw. I mean, these things are a quarter inch by a quarter inch. They're thick. These ones are, you know, paper thin by, you know, three sixteenths there. There's not a whole lot there. So, um, anything I drill, if I was to drill a hole here in the middle, cause that's where I needed to put my shock or my sway bar link or something, then that screw is probably going to pop out in here somewhere. I don't know. I just, I, there was just a couple of reasons that kept me from doing it. So, uh, I never even got to see if they worked or not. Um, yeah, you know, that's that's some of the, the differences I noticed by going to these arms, so. I, I bought a lot of them, too, so. I got all these arms now. Um, what else you can hold more ginger ale. Huh? You can hold more ginger ale. You got all those arms. Yeah? Oh, I could. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the store and, and tried to get some, uh, I drink Canada Dry ginger ale, and they were out. And at least they had ginger ale. They had Schweppes, so it's... Must it's, have been the same people who bought all the toilet paper. Yeah. They bought all the ginger ale, <laughs> bastards. Um, yeah, I, I definitely like the Canada Dry better, but... I don't know, ginger ale is something my grandma always had when I was a kid, and I just... I, I don't know, it's from my childhood. I love ginger ale, so... 
Um, Proud supporter. Any other questions, guys? <laughs> I've been kind of answering them as we go. Okay. Is the tape on the wheelie bars to remember what side the bar gets tweaked? That's exactly what it is. So the way I do this is let's say the car is neutral. I have no tape on it. If the car is going left and I slightly left and I want a little bit of right bar, because remember it's opposite, um, a little bit of, 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 of or a tape up here, up high, means that it only needs, a, to me, only means that it needs a little bit of right bar, but right bar nonetheless. If it's all the way back here, and that's where I have the tape, that means it needs a lot of, a lot of right bar. Um, and yeah, that's, that's just a, like I said, you got to reset it all day long. And once you figure it out, practicing in the morning, you want to be able to just grab the car and tweak the bar to where you need it. And that's a good way to remember. That's exactly what it is. It's a little piece of tape to remind what side it needs to be tweaked on. Have you played with anti-squat? <sighs> a little bit. Um, again, that's one of those things that's just different on every car. Um, so it would be too hard and in depth for me to explain what it is and show what I did on my car. It might not even work for your car. It's something that's not super, super huge on these cars. So, um, I know there's one question missed up top. Um, I think it was the guy asking if we run mid motor. I actually am going to try mid motor again. Okay. I just haven't been telling anybody cause I was kind of going to roll it out. Just, we get that. Well, bam. We, and it's going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> we get this question a lot from what I've seen in the in the mid motor cars that I've seen mid motor cars I've raced the mid motor car uh, that I've I've helped adjust and try to make work um, the rear motor cars just bite harder so you know traction is the name of the game in these cars we're trying to get traction and we don't have a whole lot because we're not prepping anything we're running on on you know streets and parking lots and stuff like that so um, I'm gonna try and get traction anywhere I can and that's one of the ways I do it. Yeah, boy. <laughs> I ain't seen nothing else cropping up. Questions, questions, questions. Yeah, I, I, I got you know more time here, guys. We can't go too late tonight. We're actually gonna. We're at ten fifteen. We're gonna gather oh. tomorrow and go RC racing uh, on an off road track of ours, uh, our buddies Kelly, um, and so we gotta get your beauty sleep. Yeah, yeah, I gotta get my beauty sleep. But um, <laughs> keep that trigger finger sharp. I haven't seen <laughs> Okay. Well, let me say uh, one more time. Um, thank you again to Troy Schroeder at Phantom. Um, nicest guy. Great products. Uh, it's the only only batteries and motor I'll run. Um, and uh, if you want some fast stuff that really really isn't too priced too bad, you know it's about mid road. Um, you know, there's batteries out there that are two hundred dollars for a two S, and that's just too much money for a battery. Um, especially when you can take one of those and put it up next to one of these and you get the, you know, there's, there's not really any difference in, in performance. So, um, my Fresh money's, these aren't, these aren't super cheap <laughs> right batteries. These aren't down. $40 batteries, but, um, I what know. does this battery pack go for on the website? Do we know? Mm, I can look. Okay. <laughs> um, this is the, I, I run the 8,200 milliamp, 130 C constant, uh, phantom packs. Um, and they're just, they're, they're great packs. Um, I run a forty dollar pack. Well, not anymore. I upgraded to an eighty dollar pack. Yeah, I wasn't running forty dollar packs for a long and time. That, and that's okay. You know, if that's what you can afford, that's okay. They were know? doing me well, so I couldn't. I couldn't justify spending more money at the time because they were working so well. But when you get to a point where you can go, okay, maybe I want to try one of these hundred and thirty C nicer packs. You know, I I would. You know, I haven't quite made the leap that far. I've gone up to a hundred twenty C. So these are one hundred and twenty one dollars. So like I said, they're not. They're not. They're not super cheap, but there's batteries out there that are more expensive. And if you want a decently priced battery that is just going to be a contender and bring home some W's um, and it will be reliable and not let you down, uh, these these Phantom Packs are just, they're the bee's knees. We're running them and they're just, they're, they're great. <laughs> What's Emma call her car? What's that? So if someone wants to know what Emma calls her car. Uh, stinky Pinky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how, you know, kids say the darndest things and she has no other meaning for that so she uh yeah you know she's a kid she likes the word fart and stuff so <laughs> who doesn't uh, like the word fart yeah <laughs> like you know I, I will if i'm i don't care if i'm you know in a police station or church if someone rips one it's funny i'm gonna have to laugh because it's just funny um but yeah that's it's just stinky pinky it's a pink car and and she likes the word fart so that's where the name came from it's it's called stinky pinky so more or less rebound in rear shocks so that more or less rebound in rear shocks 
uh, I'd go for more. Um, and as far as the anti-squat question, you know, um, I have, I don't have to worry about anti-squat too much due to the fact that before this car squats out, it's going to have the wheelie bar hitting in the back and it's going to have the, the fuel tubing holding it up off the ground. So that's something that doesn't really come into consideration. The only thing you need to really worry about is droop. Let your arms droop, guys. You know, um, you want to mount your shocks in such a way that when they're on their own weight, it really can sit low. But when it pops up, you want those arms to travel. You don't want, if your wheels are leaving the ground in the front, um, then you don't have enough travel and you're actually making, you're putting more strain on the motor and the speed control and the battery, lifting the, we the weight of the wheels and the A-arms and the spindles and everything up off the ground uh, when you could just be doing that and keeping steering. So um, if you notice this car right now is a good quarter inch off the, off the ground and it's that, that's the end of it right there. So I don't have to worry about anti-squatting it. You know, it's, it's, it's stopped already. So, <laughs> um, does Emma's car hit the wheelie bar with a 12 turn motor? Absolutely. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, <clears throat> don't just, don't just get your kids into this. If you can afford to, for this new class, we're trying to start the, 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 the junior class, um, really, really help make it exciting by putting a little bit of the ingenuity and hard work you do into your car into the kid's car too, because the better they do, um, the more fun they're going to have. And I'll tell you what, I've put some time into that car um, and it works really good. So you guys better get your kid's cars working good too. Um, we set the car up lightweight to run a full-blown system like we run and we went out and did a, a test hit and it was it happened too quick for her. Um, she's pretty good. You know, even with the Valenian system, she could go down the lane and if it went off, she could correct it. She's really, really good. Um, but for a seven year old, but when she got to the end, you know, it happened so quick and she got to the end and she hit the brakes cause she got scared that she was going to crash the car. And when it, when she hit the brakes, it flipped around backward and, and, and rolled and yeah. And then she hit the brake again. It was reversed right into a curb and she broke wheelie bar. So no big deal. Um, I, she's just obviously not ready for 60,000 RPM. So that's when... We, had, we saw the other guy up in was Red Ring or Chico, I was for Redding. Um, they were going to have a race that got canceled because of COVID. And they were like, hey, we got a you know, kids class. And it got me thinking, well, hey, let's let's make some some basic rules for the kids class so people can compete that keep it cheap and keep it fun. And that is anything goes as long as your NPRC rules. You got to have a 12-turn motor and whatever the speed control is called by Traxxas. That's the cheap little brushed XL5? speed. The XL5 or something like that that runs the brushed motor. Pretty good for me. It's a really cheap setup, so you don't have to spend a lot of money on the car, and they're going to get to have fun. This is all about the kids, you guys. If we can't get our children into this, and we can't make them have fun and get interested in it, well, then in five years or 15 years, when we're either dead or not in this anymore, there's going to be nobody to carry the sport on. It's all about the kids, you know? The kids are looking up to us. The kids are watching what we're running. Um, and, you know, there was an old saying with the real race cars that, you know, no matter how good or how bad you do on race day, there is some kid there at that track wishing he was you right there. So, you know, that really rang true that, you know, that these kids, they, they, you know, what kid doesn't like a 60 mile an hour remote control car, you know, but you know, if they come into, you know, the, the, the attitudes or anything like that, or, or too much competitiveness in a, in a, in a, in a youth class, um, then it's gonna, um, it's, it's gonna drive the kids away and that's not what we want to do. So, um, if you have the means, guys, go to your local hobby shop. Jake sells a hundred dollar roller or a hundred dollar slider, which is a whole slash setup for drag. You got to buy the wheels, the tires, the electronics. He has the the twelve turn Titan motors and the brush speed controls. Um, I'm hoping that this catches on and Jake, our local hobby shop, can sell them like hotcakes um, because there's a lot of kids. There's a lot of guys coming out that have their kids and their kids are sitting there on on phones or they're running Run around, around when they could yeah. be out there being part of the racing and it makes them feel special and they're doing. This is, when I was growing up, I didn't have a dad growing up and I was starting to get a lot of trouble. My mom bought me my first RC10 when I was about 11 or 12 and it was a good, clean hobby that kept me out of trouble and it really, it's why these stupid cars are why I am at the most highest level of, of mechanical ability when it comes to what I do for a living. It taught me how to be a mechanic. Um, and, and it's not just learning how to work on cars. It's mechanics, how a door opens, how, you know, it, it's everything in life. It's, you know, geometry is everywhere, you know, so get the kids and do it guys. Um, try and buy local at your local hobby shop. And what about anything else? Yeah. Do you experiment with different foams? Absolutely. I've tried all different kinds of foams in my tires Okay. and the drive tires. I know, I know Ricky's played with foams too. 
swapping out foams from different brands to different brands, buying foams that are just foams, putting them in tire, trying them. Um, it just, it's something that probably depends on your car also. I mean, different foams, different different uh, densities, different stiffness, stiffnesses are going to react differently with different tires, obviously. I mean, I couldn't take the foam out of this, this tire and throw it in, you know, the tire that's over there underneath Ricky's car and expect it to be great or do the same thing because it might not might be completely, you know, completely different and uh, catastrophic, not to say catastrophic, but not uh, productive, be counterproductive to what you're trying to do. And again, that's where you might have to open up your pocketbook a little bit to perfect what is going to work the best on your car, rather than just settling for something that works mundane, is because what works, you know, I have me and me and Ricky on all our Black Widow cars, we run a certain tire. And that certain tire works okay on Randy's, but Randy's use, uses the same tire but a different compound, and that's when his car comes alive. Why? Because it's a different car, you know? Um, it's even like that with real cars. You can have two cars on the Ford assembly line going out, two Mustangs, brand new 2020s, and once they get out into the public and they're sold and they're living their lives, those cars are going to have different temperaments. They're going to do different things. One's going to last longer than the other. One's going to run harder than the other, you know? One's going to go um, for, the, cur for the crowd. They're all different. These cars... <laughs> these... Sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it, baby. <laughs> Um, this car was modeled, this is my new car, the Gunslinger, and this car was modeled to mimic the Ghost, and the reason why I did it is because it works, it's a, it's a champion, and, Gabe left. and, uh, they are mirrored as far as setup suspension-wise, same chassis, same electronics, same transmission, same gear ratio, same axle, same this, same that, and they're different, they're two totally different cars, so, um, I guess they do have a stinky pinky on street outlaws, apparently, yeah. So yeah, Disco yeah. Dean. Yeah, Disco Dean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What length do you make fuel line on the shocks? Dave answered it. Oh, okay. Okay, I would say that if, if you're having a tough time, if you go back and watch this video and how to get that distance of the shock tubing, uh, and it's hard, it is hard to measure it because you got to do it with the springs in, and the springs are in the way of what you're trying to measure. Um, a half inch. If you can cut two pieces at a half inch, that is usually a really good starting point. So... Show the mounting locations and the brackets to stiffen up the RPM bumper mount. Oh, the Lily R mount. Um, he you, always wants to see on your car what. Yeah, what Ricky, you, I need a flashlight though. Because you're not, it's so dark in there. I got red spacers. Okay, so. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so you can see them right here if you come in here close with the camera. There's a red spacer there. Wait, there's a bad glare. So if this didn't have that spacer there, that little bit of the spacer that it's bolted over to this piece could send this bar a quarter inch one way. And we don't want that to happen. And you might have to take this assembly, putting it together, trying different shims. Uh, if you put it together all loosely, the assembly itself will tell you where it needs shims and stuff. And as you start to shim it, you, you know, snug them down a little bit. And if it's shooting off one way, then go back and add it a little bit. You know, if this thing is shooting this way, then I probably have something too far pushing this way. But it's, if it's shooting this way, then I have something sticking out too far on this way. So you've got you to gotta play with this assembly. Um, and it, it's a little bit tricky to do and it can be frustrating. Um, but once you shim it and, and this thing is pretty much straight, then you can lock everything down and, and you got it, you know? Um, that's one of those things where, you know, they're all gonna be, they're all shimmed out a little bit different, but they all require shimming and you have to do it. You're gonna have to put yourself through that agony to get your, your wheelie bar straight, so. What do you have to do, Randy? Do the shimmy. The shimmy, the wheelie bar shimmy. So I guess that's kind of the truffle shuffle. Day. Damn, that's a race car right there. Look how I love how that thing sits in the front. She just low slung and ready for fun. Yeah, see in this thing, see the weight. Again, he well, he doesn't have a battery in it, but I mean it's I can lift it up and it sits down on it. It lowers itself, and he's still got all of that suspension. So when the car does pop up, and it's gonna pop up if you launch hard enough, that he doesn't lose steering. Anything else, guys? I think that's it. Let me see. You guys said that 15 questions ago. Yeah, the yeah. just came. Just making sure I, I want to yeah. get to everybody's uh, everybody's questions. Um, we are going to sign off here in a minute, but I want to answer anybody else's questions while we're live. So if you have some, please chime in. 
Um, Anybody? We'll give it a minute or two so that, because I know the, the feed's a little bit yeah. ahead of the texting. Or the, you know what I mean, the comments. Thank you. I definitely learned a lot. Past couple of hours, you guys are the best. Have a great night. Thank Aww. you. Thank you, Brandon. I get that a lot. Um, and I think it's because we open the lids to our cars and we open our hearts and we know what it's like to begin or have a car that doesn't work right. Um, and we get feedback like that daily, all day long, from the time I wake up to the time I go to, to bed at night, um, all day long at work. I'm constantly got, I mean, even guys that don't, I have guys that, that say that after asking for information. Um, but then they also, I have a lot of guys, maybe 10 people a week that, that really just send me messages to say, hey man, thank you for what you guys are doing. You guys really helped me out. And that, Remember, I go right back to the very first episode. I said, "All if this one show can help one guy, well, that one show helped 250 people. You know, it got viewed 11,000 times. So I, I, I got a lot more than I bargained for when it came to help, uh, helping people, and I'm just absolutely ecstatic about that. So I'm really, really glad I can help people, um, and I'll continue to help people. <laughs> when are you guys going to post videos of that drift car running? Uh, why don't you go grab it, and I'll, I'll sit it here on the table and turn it on. So Gabe, oh, it's cute. Our race master gave me this car, and I put electronics in it. I liked it. I'm not really into the drifting, but I liked it because the design of the car is just like outrageous. The complexity. The complexity of the car. But it's a uh, belt to move gears, to move shafts, to move other belts. She's a, a bad little mamma jamma. Yeah, she's just a cool little toy. So she's all done now. I got a, I want to change the piping here. And I got an inter intercooler to put up here and a window net and little stuff like that. She's got a nitrous bottle on a little shelf next to the dashboard. She got the dashboard in her now. Um, she's got some serious fans in her. Because I didn't know anything about drifting. I didn't know if they were going to get hot or not. I actually started this build with a 3.5 turn. And the second I went outside with it, and hit the gas, it broke like three out of the four axles in it. Mm. So, I mean, it was way too much power. So now I think it has like a 17.5 in it and it's just perfect. It's just enough power to, to get them spinning and keep them spinning, but it's it doesn't hurt the drivetrain. And this is a really nice, this is a Fijon. FJ9. Yeah, it's it's a carbon fiber car. It's a belt drive. If you come in here, it's a belt drive into a belt drive, into a shaft, into another belt drive, into a bunch <laughs> of shafts that go backward. But the, if I were to take the body off this, the way they did it, I mean, it's just a, a machining engineering marvel. I mean, the car is just so awesome. So The open diff in the rear. Huh? Open diff in the rear. Locked. No, but it's open. It's just, it's exposed diff. Oh, yeah, yeah, The diffs are totally open. There's no cases. So she's a pretty little car. And she's all, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but she's all lame. Lame flaked out. Yeah, lame flaked out. Like my bass leaders. Any other questions, guys? Uh, <laughs> I want to see Judd's car make a make a hit on episode ten. Yeah, maybe we <laughs> can do that. Walk out front, do a hit down the street. I'll do that. I might have to move the show a little earlier because it's dark. I'll run it in the street. I don't care. I'll pull the razor out and put the light on the street. I'll run, you know, and as far as the racing goes, guys, if, if, if we can put it together and meet up, I will never turn a race down. I'll race anybody on any surface um, for a handshake or any amount of money. Um, I, I love to race, and I, I don't understand why some guys would turn races down or, or, or do anything like that, but I, 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 I like to race, so. We got a question on front springs. What, do you guys know what part number that is for the front spring? Ooh. Are they... Uh, I think I have the tag to one of them hanging up somewhere. 3776A. <laughs> Let's see. EXL, real, no. Nope. Um, I don't. I'm assuming it would probably be this same number with a different letter. Or it could be. A one letter different. But I think the pink is the, is the or the P is the pink. So it might be a two, four, five, eight. You know what I'm Very saying? Very possible. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what the part number is on that, guys. Go to your local hobby shop. Tell me you want the stock Traxxas Ultra Shock front springs or rear springs. Um, pink. Yeah, you want the pink ones. And I don't think that they make. They make the pink compound, 
in the um what do you call it spring like these dual rate. the dual rate springs but the dual rate springs um are now i think all white and they just paint a little pink on them i don't know why tracks i you know save money instead of painting everything a different color you know just paint them all one color and put a dab of what it is on there so it's 12 32 a.m here well thank you sky for staying yeah with the us. guys <laughs> the guys on the east coast and in the midwest thank you for staying up and supporting us and watching the video um, if there's anybody out there that catches this video at a later date, other than the live timing, uh, live uh, filming of it right now, um, you know, and, and you're having a problem and you're no, like, you hey, you know, I have another either. question on top of what was asked. They didn't Ooh. cover something. Get a hold of me. I'll help you out. Um, again, I'd like to give a shout out to Troy Schroeder uh, of Phantom for, for backing us and giving us the opportunity to, uh, to um, represent and run some of the best stuff in the world. Um, I want to give uh, my hat off again to uh, Steve Nigri from uh, RCRI um, Chassis. Uh, if you're thinking about building a car, you're kind of up in the air of what chassis to build or buy, um, go to his website, get a Black Widow, do yourself a favor, uh, take the take the guesswork out of it and just build one of these race cars. Um, and uh, and Jake at Jake's Performance Hobbies again, he ships uh, 707-586-3375. If you guys need any drag racing goodies, um, and you want to support a local hobby shop, uh, please get a hold of him. And other than that, I have to say I will see everybody in Facebook land on episode nine. Yeah. Say bye. Bye. Say bye. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Later, guys.